Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Apocalypse. I am your storyteller, Ryan, and I am here with some fantastic people from the in and out Salvage Company. They're going to introduce themselves and their characters now. Yes, I am Tyler. I play Corin Wisevale, the very, very intelligent uh, dragonkin who is super lazy, uh, but has uh, really kicked it in the butt lately since they're about to go someplace very, very dangerous. I was suddenly dry of mouth. I'm Aaron. <laughs> I play Quinn, I'm and nervous. I play a <laughs> creative seer who has awakened dreams. I'm really excited about our name in and out salvage company here. Is it company? Are we company? We just said in, just and, out in and out salvage. There's no company. I, I have I company like in the episode description. But All right. I can well, take we're pretty. Out. We're pretty good, but we're not as good as the Five Guys Salvage Company. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I intentionally want to see if I can get some bait. Uh. 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 Well, following that, I'm Claire Clarity. I play Captain Mary Durant, the impulsive rebel who rules the waves um, with her new chained cutlass. She's, she's, she's the one who finds trouble. Yes. <laughs> this is going to go great. <laughs> <laughs> Quinn's sure not going to lose an arm. <laughs> oh. And I'm John Bailey. I play Isaac Patterson, the young elf mad scientist in training. And uh, I will probably be the one to lose the arm, given my roles from last week. I mean, you had some Truly bad rolls last week, and it cannot possibly uh, continue into this week. And I've just been worried well, that I forgot to turn down the music. So uh, again, I'm preemptively again. putting my dice in detention after that comment because <laughs> Ryan absolutely jinxed it. That's right, I did. It'll be <laughs> glorious. Uh, welcome, everyone. If you're not familiar with After the Fall. Uh, this is a post-apocalyptic role-playing game uh, set after a magical apocalypse in our own world, where in one weird moment back in 2020, uh, everybody in the world turned, well, most everybody in the world turned into various fantasy races, animals turned into fantasy creatures, and magic came back. And society quickly fell apart. Uh, our players have just graduated from the high school in Newcastle, Minnesota, where they are from. And they have decided to take on the job of uh, salvage or scavengers as they go out uh, into the wasteland of the world that was before them and uh, try to find useful stuff that they can repurpose and reuse in their own community. Uh, they have had quite a road to get to this point involving uh, quite a few twists and turns, giant snake creatures, cannibal goblins, uh, a f starting a fire at a church, <laughs> um, more recently a boat race, a manticore, and then uh, exploring some tunnels. Uh, but yeah, otherwise smooth sailing really, right? Yeah. Oh, good. Uh, you I mean, also, I got to hold a boy's hand, so... You did get to hold a boy's hand. <laughs> Philip. <laughs> yes, he is very sad to see you leaving town. <laughs> All right. Uh, also, big shout out to, in our audience tonight, we do have uh, Brenna Ironbeard's player, uh, Melissa, over on Dungeon Spheres on Wednesday nights here on the channel and soon to be on the Dungeon Pop channel. Uh, Melissa is a finalist in the Dungeon Masters competition from Wizards of the Coast, mm, uh, yes. and she's uh, in the final three, which wow. is so cool. <laughs> uh, we're all really pulling for you, Melissa. Mm -hmm. um, and you may notice from the uh, logo 
right above, oh, top five. You know what? I, I'm pretty sure you're going to be in the top three. <laughs> so I'm just saying it preemptively. You're going to be in the top one when you win it. That is Yay. correct. All positions. We all believe in you. Um, as I was saying, we are not playing Dungeons & Dragons tonight. We have the Cypher system uh, instead, which we felt worked a little bit better for this setting. So uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and get started. Players, are you ready? Thumbs up, ready. head nods, <laughs> in you know, shrugs. It's all good. I think we're going to take that as uh, that we're ready. So players, uh, we're going to open tonight's session in the early morning hours of a late uh, May day. The sun is shining, just peeking over the horizon as you are finishing packing a... What color is the SUV, Tyler? I've had time to paint it, right? Like, say we've had time to I paint mean, it. I mean, Quinn could have painted it with sure. all of her paints like she painted the boat. Uh, I think Corin would have heavily, heavily gone with camo because we're going somewhere where we don't want to be <laughs> spotted. All right. So <laughs> a camouflage patterned uh, SUV. She paints it snow camo and it just stands out. <laughs> it is Minnesota. I, I snuck in a what? few, <laughs> you know, like secret flowers in the, the camo but as long they're as very it's small mostly. they're very small anyone close enough to see the flowers will be able to notice that it's, <laughs> that it's yes. an suv yes absolutely it's not like why, it's wearing an invisibility why can't i clothes. get these flowers why can't i pick them <laughs> no so you're loading up what final preparations did your characters make for this journey I would have done what uh, Wilma had told me to do, and I would have gone and had an extensive conversation with my grandmother about uh, maps, about uh, roads and stuff that would take us as secret as we could uh, to where we were going because we were wanting to avoid the Knights of Snelling at all costs. Okay. So... Convo with Grandmother Wisevale. Outside of that, the only thing I would have done was asked my parents, uh, us being a military family, being like, anything you can, any items you want to give your son before he heads off into the dangerous world? Okay. Advice is also welcome. Your father told you, don't get dead. <laughs> I told him I'd worked that much out for myself, but thanks. <laughs> they said that they will see what they can do. Anybody else? Isaac would probably have um, had a talk with uh, his parents, told them that he had formed a, an official like salvaging company with his friends and that he would be gone for you know longer periods now. Uh, his mom would probably be a little worried, but his dad would be you know, and, you know but his and his dad would be too but he, but they would both be know that they but given that given their track record that they seem to be doing okay and that they've got each other's to handle whatever come whatever comes at them and then probably you know make you know make his final days leading up to the, them leaving you know nice and wholesome and cozy okay Uh, I would have definitely made sure we had enough food, for one. Quinn would have been very concerned about making sure we had enough food. And then also, I know I have a first aid kit, but I might try to see if I could scrounge up any extra supplies in that realm of, of for first aid, bandages, well, anything like that. Well, and you all that. were given $100 to kind of purchase supplies and get yourselves ready for this, so... Yeah. Uh, any particular special things you want to pick up with that? For the first aid kit? Or with the $100? With That's the 100. what I was going to... I would probably spend the money on the first aid stuff and the, the food. That's what I was going to... Okay. 
spend my money on. I believe and we I have also our quartermaster. Had the coffee beans as well that I would probably take as like an exchange to get make sure that we had more supplies than the hundred dollars that I had to spend. Okay. Because I haven't sold that yet. No, you haven't. And Nelly. Um, Nelly has probably mostly just been um, daydreaming and not being particularly useful. Um, she's probably been, honestly, she's mostly been dealing with um, complicated thoughts and feelings uh, regarding the uh, necklace she received um, and not really understanding anything to do with that and mostly being confused and distracted most of the time, so much so that she's forgetting to um, be mean to her dad. <laughs> oh, something's definitely up then. <laughs> uh, <laughs> being mostly distracted during any conversations with him. Okay. Um, but as far as being useful, uh, she uh, has decided to scrounge up some maps of the, the Twin Cities area uh, where we're heading. Some salvaged maps. Okay. With, her, with, the, with the money she got, she was going to try and procure there. Yes. Sounds good. All right. Uh, so as we open on that bright morning in May, uh, did you I have did a think question, of, John? Yeah, I did have uh, did have one quick question. Yeah. Um, regarding the cipher systems uh, thing, what would be how what exactly would that cover for a um, hundred dollars uh, in this particular instance? So like the inexpensive expensive versus the expensive stuff so you could get one expensive item a couple of moderately priced items a few inexpensive items with that hundred dollars um not on top of each other but like yeah. one category or mix and match a little bit but you know just let me know uh cypher system doesn't use uh like gold pieces or dollars or anything it has pricing categories and Essentially, you pick and choose from those based on what kind of wealth you have. Because I was thinking for Isaac, uh, grabbing a short bow, since he's trained in that, and then uh, however many arrows he can get left after that. Let's say 12 arrows. Okay. So... They had a special. Yep. Yeah. So we'll add that to the inventory. And okay. then would it be possible for him to use some salvaged metal to reinforce his wooden shield before he goes. Uh, let's go ahead and do our first roll of the night and see if your dice luck from last week is going to hold over. Uh, okay. We're oh, going to call it a difficulty <laughs> three, um, and that's going to be a mental test. Okay. Um, wood, not machinery. Uh, shoot. Uh, would Tinker count for this? Boom. Down to I'm, a two. Okay. Alrighty. Six or better. Come on, what's the odds? Really? No you, didn't. no, you didn't. Five. Okay. Oh. Oh, that is heartbreaking. Uh, so much for that. I guess it's still a wooden shield. So you do take some time leading up to it, and oh, hello, Dart. And. <laughs> you take some pieces of metal and you're attaching it to the shield and you're pretty sure that, you know, it's going to be a nice sturdy shield. But when you actually go to pick it up, the metal just kind of falls off. Uh, oh, well, I'd probably also bring um, some, some of the most um, important books with me since we're not going to be coming back things on, machinery, technology, things that are things that on the history of technology and then especially on the history of this area. Okay. So you pack books in your little cargo trunk. Um, I bought a bag of heavy tools. So I feel like that would be very good for the car and for other stuff that we might encounter. Um, and I also probably packed whatever books I could carry that I have read about, you know, engineering, computers, any of that stuff. Okay. Anything else we want to do in preparation? All right. Not that I can think of. <laughs> so, 
bright, sunny May morning. It's warm, grass is dewy as Corin, you pull the SUV out from the Newcastle, uh, not gates, uh, this is actually uh, Pine Guard that you're all gathering at. Uh, you pull the SUV through the gates of Pine Guard, pointed down the interstate towards the Twin Cities. As you get out and begin to check the tire pressure, make sure the fluids and everything are correct, you're the first one to arrive here this morning. Soon, your parents arrive. Here. Yeah, I mean, they do live here, yes. Uh, with your grandmother, and she kind of pulls you aside for a moment and says, All right, so you're going to do what I said, right? You're going to take the long way around the Twin Cities and come in from the west side. Right. And how long did you say that would take as compared to going straight through? Well, two to three days would be my guess, given the condition of the roads and various hazards you'll meet along the way. Better safe than sorry. Yes. Give yourself time. Don't rush it. Worst thing happens, your vehicle breaks down out there. I uh, kind of open the trunk and I pat like the tools and stuff and I go, I think I can keep her running. Good, good. Your parents walk up to you and they have a box in wrapping paper. You've known this wrapping paper all your life because every single gift you've gotten has been wrapped in this wrapping paper that they have painstakingly preserved and reused time after time. Okay, so I know to open it gently. Yep, you carefully pop I the I roll tape. my eyes the whole time, but I'm, ro <laughs> I'm taking it slowly. Your mom is uh, kind of holding back tears, but your dad's actually looks very proud of you. You're not entirely sure if that's just he's happy to see you go or what the situation is, but... <laughs> not going to question it. Uh, inside the box, there is a hand-knitted sweater that is perfectly sized for you and has a hood. Um, Ooh, awesome. Underneath the sweater is something more interesting, though. What is underneath the sweater? A set of shortwave radios. <laughs> I make that sound when I grab. <laughs> it does. Actually, you turn it on, it's too close to the other one, it gives the feedback sound. <laughs> so, what are so two of two of them? Yes. These are How did I'm not going to ask how. Uh what is the range on these? Uh, they're good for up about 300 feet. These will come in these will come in handy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, it's the least we can do. You've uh, you've been doing really well the last few months here, Cor, and we're just we're very proud of you, son. Dad, I have a question for you, actually. It's one I think you would be best to answer. The one thing that I'm... I know there's a bunch of stuff out in the wild to, to be weary of after the fall. But the one thing I want to ask you about, what should we do if we encounter the Knights of Snelling? Because they will not like that we're there. Don't go for your weapons. Okay. Um, we, we're, we're at peace with them, but okay. you don't need some incident where the general's son shoots one of them or something. I wouldn't. But good to know. If you do end up doing that, no witnesses. I I look at him and I go. Your I mom like it. elbows him in the ribs. <laughs> I look at both of them and I go, I won't do that unless I have to. And the only reason I would have to, and I just look back at my, fr I look back at what I assume maybe one or two of my friends coming up the road or something like that. I go, that's the only reason I'd have to. He kind of nods. Uh, I also assume probably don't tell them exactly why we're there. You're a salvage assume, company. Well, yes. I don't assume we want them to really know the importance of what we're doing. They'll take a cut of anything that salvage companies pull out of the Twin Cities. So if you're found not registered, they'll 
likely try to impose a fine if they don't just attack you outright. Uh, DM wise, we're like we're registered now, aren't we? You're registered with Newcastle. But not your outside. uh your registration hasn't really made it down river yet. <laughs> so we'd probably so Corn would know that if this does come up, he'd probably have to in some way or some form or fashion play ball a little bit. Just be relaxed, be friendly. They're not bad people. They're just paranoid. <laughs> At that point, Isaac, uh, your parents have accompanied you to the uh, to Pine Guard here this morning. Uh, your father actually swung by the bakery and splurged for coffee Ooh. for the three of you. Uh, and you also got uh, the equivalent of a donut in this world. It's very sweet and fried, and you know what? Good enough. Mm -hmm. Take it. As you pull up, you see Corn and his parents and his grandmother, the camouflage SUV that he's been working on for months at your father's garage. And this is happening. You're about to leave Newcastle. Your mom is crying. She is very emotional over this and uh, has her arm wrapped around you in a death grip. But your dad seems like he's... No, he's not good either. He's he's very emotional in this moment too, <laughs> but he's trying to hold it together. And especially with the general there. <laughs> Isaac is probably in the same boat as his dad where... He thinks, I got this. I got this. I told I I I to totally have this. I'm not gonna cry. I'm not. <laughs> totally totally <laughs> not gonna <clears throat> It's a good thing it's there just, aren't charisma saving throws in this this world. <laughs> dust. It's just dust in the, the air. It's a very dusty sun, yeah, I know. Yes. <laughs> you get a there. A lot of smoke in Pine Guard. Yeah. <laughs> There is actually. <laughs> um, you unload your stuff, get the get it loaded into the SUV, and uh, your mother and father come over to you with a uh, bag. It is a New World bag, hand sewn from fabric that one of the other settlements wove, and uh, something is. It looks like there's some sort of grease or something inside of it. It's got some shiny mm. spots as they hold it out to you. Thanks. Uh, um. There's enough in there for lunch and dinner. As you open the bag, it is filled with tacos. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I didn't want you to miss taco night, honey. Um. And Isaac is almost about to start crying again. She just hold, hugs you and holds you. So, Nell and Quinn, you both got up very early to make the journey down to Pine Guard from Bread Seed. And your parents chartered a cart to take you that way. So it's just you, Nell's dad, and Quinn's mom who are talking quietly with each other at the front of the cart. I think Nell would probably find this pretty awkward if she wasn't busy being distracted and fidgeting with the necklace. <laughs> uh, I'm assuming Quinn's just got like her arms full of just like a bag of, f of food that she's holding tight to her chest in excitement and just... Like now, 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 do you think, do you think this, do you think this is gonna go well? Yeah, it'll be fine. It'll go great. You think, you think so? Yeah, of course. Okay. We're awesome. Oh, <laughs> I'm just a little nervous. I guess I. Well, this is this must be the longest we've ever been away from home. We never, we've never done something like this before. I mean, like a day, 
at, at most. It's, it's a little scary, don't you think? No, it just shrugs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's just like... <laughs> Hugs the food tighter. <laughs> Your parents have been surprisingly cool about the two of you leaving. Uh, Nell, your father in particular, you're very surprised that, I mean, if you weren't so distracted with everything going on in your life, you would be surprised of his sort of acceptance and calmness of the situation. But as you make your way to... Uh, Newcastle, on your way to Pine Guard, uh, the cart stops in front of the Mariner Inn. Or the Mainer Inn, I think it is. The Mariner? Main? Yeah, Mariner. Uh, where the Knights of Pratchett are housed, and Philip comes bounding down the steps of the bed and breakfast and jumps in the back of the carriage. And s- kind of sits next to Quinn, <laughs> reaches out for your hand. She'll, she'll like very embarrassed like hug the food with one hand and, and take his hand with the other <laughs> I'm really gonna miss you well I won't be gone too long I know but it's gonna be I mean I, by the time you get back I'll be on my trip to Lake Krogol and oh yeah I mean if we find the sword I, I, I'm gonna have to go back to England is that what happens if you find the sword? Yeah, we, we've got to uh, bring the sword back to uh, the the king. Oh, and all all of you have to to go back. Well, yeah, with that's the, the that's the plan. <laughs> you can't. Let's hope you don't find it then. <laughs> well, no, we've well, got to find it. We've got to put everything back the way it was. That's the only well, way. If it was, I mean, it wouldn't be would it be that bad. If it was the way it was and not the way the way it or it is the way it is and and not the way it was. There is a moment of calm <laughs> and quiet. The the light twittering of birds can be heard in the fields as you exit Newcastle <laughs> and head south towards Pine Guard. As he just kind of looks at you and says <laughs> I could think of worse fates. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I can't... I meant that in the best possible way. I mean... <laughs> uh-huh, like, not like, like it's a punishment or anything. Like, de- dying is pretty bad. Well, don't do that. I, I'm just saying that's the worst fate. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's death. He just kind of squeezes your hand. <laughs> She's she like just uh, like puts her head down in embarrassment. <laughs> um, you might be even more embarrassed as your mom and Nell's dad have kind of like leaned in as they're watching the two of you interact. <laughs> <laughs> she she just sh- continues to shrink behind her stuff, just like. <laughs> You can't get any smaller, Quinn. You wanted to be a big halfling. I'm trying to get smaller. <laughs> All right. Well, that reminded me of a question I had um, yes. about the Knights of Snelling. Mm-hmm. Are they are the are they the xenophobic anti magic people, or is that a different faction? They don't allow magic in their settlements. No. How, and how in, they... their, in their settlements. Yes. Okay. And how do they feel about non-human races? They have no problem with them. As okay. far as they're concerned, you're all technically human. Fair enough. Okay. Just wanted clarification. Just, you know, halfling human, dragonkin human, elf human. Whole, whole spectrum of humanity. Alright. Cool. That's all. Okay. So, as the uh, cart from Breadseed wheels in to the underpass beneath the fort that makes up the bulk of Pine Guard and approaches the SUV, uh, the sun is starting to peek over the horizon. The day is going to be a nice, warm spring day. Uh, not a cloud in sight. 
Nell and Quinn, you see that Isaac and his parents, and Corin and his parents, and his grandma are all gathered there. I'm just going to run up, shout shotgun, and hop in the car. <laughs> 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 Before she does that, I go, are you navigating? I pull out the maps. <laughs> can, I see the, can I see those since I'm driving? I, I hand him the maps, yeah. Cool. Uh, you kind of spread the map out against the, the hood. Mm -hmm. Your grandma hobbles over and starts to point out a good route, and she looks at Nell and says, Young lady, are these old man Johnson's maps? Well, they're my maps. I bought them. But did you buy them from old man Johnson? You're from Breadseed, right? Yes. I guess so. You don't know who you purchased them from? You guess you're from Breadseed? <laughs> I guess I bought them from Old Man. What was his name? Old Man Johnson. Yeah, I suppose. I knew that bastard was holding out on me. Didn't I say it, Corin? <laughs> Multiple times. Uh, I'm going to go have a word with him. You hold that cart right there. Uh, we'll see about this. <laughs> I roll up. The, I roll up the maps and I. And I shove them at Isaac, and I look at Nell, and I go, "You don't know you're from Breadseed? Get in the back." <laughs> <laughs> Isaac's navigating, <laughs> and I look at Isaac, and I go, "You've just been promoted." I'm pretty good at maps. Uh, that's, it's, uh, uh, okay. Before I move to the back, I'm gonna pull out the hula girl and set it up on the dashboard. Nice. I just corn just looks at it and is just like, All right. yeah. "You flick a little switch on it, and it suction cups down to the dashboard." <laughs> I flick it just to get it going. Just like. Does the hula. <laughs> Quinn, your mom approaches you. Oh, I'm gonna. I don't know what. what the, the home is gonna be so empty without you there. I'm gonna miss you. And she, like, brings you in for a hug. She'll hug real tight back. I'm gonna miss you too, Mom. I got you something. She pulls from her large bag that you made her. She pulls out a bundled scarf that she made. Oh. Uh, it is bright red. And just all one solid color of red, uh, which is a really hard yarn to get just right so it's probably had to trade a bit for it or make the dyes herself but you feel something kind of weighted in the center of it I'll carefully unwrap it and like as I'm unwrapping I'm like wrapping it around me there's a so small leather zip up bag in the center of it that she kind of like blocks other people from being able to see it okay Use it sparingly if you have to use it, okay? What is it? It's it's morphine. Oh. Okay. It how do I use how do I use it? Um she kind of carefully unzips it and <laughs> shows you the needles and vials that are in there. Tells you that you have to inject it, you have to find a vein. Okay. Uh, or worst case scenario, just drink it. It won't okay, work as okay. well, but... All right. Uh, thank, thank you. I will... she like, zip it back up and, like, kind of carefully wrap it back up in the scarf and put it in her in her bag so it keeps it okay. from getting jangled around. Thank, thank you. You're welcome, sweetie. I hope I don't have to use it. I hope so, too. <laughs> and she kind of takes a few steps back and... Philip comes up to you. Meanwhile, Nell, your dad approaches the back seat that you're currently sitting in and kind of knocks on the window, motions for you to roll it down. 
It does. You have the hand rollers. There's no electronic windows in this thing. It takes a second, and it only goes like halfway down. I'm not so. made of money. <laughs> this is a '97 guy. Just be happy guys. there's windows, okay? We had to find this and push it back to Isaac's dad's shop. You had a you had a horse that you hooked up to it and had a uh, horse draw it, right? Still had to push push behind it. It's true, you did. All its tires were flat. <laughs> <laughs> so, Nell, your father pulls out a small um, velvet bag and holds it out to you. What's this? I take it from him. And... You're okay. you're you're really growing up, Nelly, and um, I just I think your mom would want you to have this. I look inside the bag. There's a silver bracelet inside. With... Do I recognize it? Uh, you do. The silver bracelet's one you've seen before. It has a turquoise stone in the center of it. You remember seeing your mom wear this a few times when you were very oh. little. I carefully pull it out. She, um... She always said that would bring her luck. She didn't take it on, on the trip when, when, um, when everything happened, so... Uh, I thought it would be best if if you took it with you on your trip. I, I look down at it. Um, slide it onto my wrist. I, um, without looking at him, I say, thanks, Dad. Shunk, 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 shunk. <laughs> he kind of, like, puts a hand up to the window, but gets led away by Quinn's mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, Quinn, Philip, kind of pulls you aside and says, well, I guess this is it, and, uh, Oh, I'm gonna miss you. If you get back uh, early or anything, uh, come up to Lake Krogol. We could use your help. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Just kind of stands there awkwardly. She's just gonna like I get brave and hug him. <laughs> As you go in to hug him, he like thank jukes God. and kisses you. Oh, thank God! Oh. I was about She's to say Corin so walks by and whispers, so "It's just like kiss him. We might die." <laughs> she doesn't know how to to handle. She she like has her arms out. Like she was gonna hug him, and then she got stopped by that. But her arms stay up in the in the, in the air. <laughs> uh, roll a d twenty, Aaron. Okay. A three. It is a very awkward, sloppy kiss. <laughs> Sounds about oh, right. Yeah. Sounds about right. After a few moments of this awkward snogging under the uh, overpass, um. He kind of like takes a step back and says, good luck. And then he goes and joins everybody else as you all kind of load up into the SUV. Who's better at navigating, Quinn or Isaac? I uh, definitely have a background in geography. Okay. I mean, I've got, uh, I don't, I, I don't think I have anything necessarily other than I took the I was part of that, uh, the wilderness people. So I, I, I know for, like foraging and things like that. So I'm, I'm more of like the, the food, the food keeper. Let Isaac be my navigator. <laughs> Isaac climbs. Oddly into enough, the front that's seat. exactly that was yeah. exactly my role for all family trips. <laughs> I'm the keeper of the food. Quinn is in back with the coolers and mm -hmm. the crates. All right. You the turn. Moment, hmm? I was about to say the moment we start driving, um, now I'll begin singing sea shanties. 
<laughs> How very in character. Um, <laughs> so, Corin, you turn the ignition. The engine roars to life. You put it in gear, press the accelerator, and start off down the highway towards adventure. Get him out of your system. Once we get to a certain point, you're going to not sing. Because we're going to need to... Because we're going to attempt stealth. You say over the roar of the engine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. No, I, was, no, I was meaning. I was meaning like once we get out of the vehicle, I'm like, get them out of your system right now. Yeah. While we're in the vehicle. <laughs> now sings louder. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, uh, as you're driving away from Pine Guard, anybody who looks back. We'll see the assembled families of your party and some loved ones, such as they are, uh, waving vigorously at your departure. So let's talk about road travel here. Uh, it's going to be a few days with the route that you've plotted to get into the Twin Cities and to the mall. I show everybody the route that my grandmother talked about how it's going to take longer so that ever I want everybody to know what I know. All right. Whether they can utilize that knowledge, yeah. I don't know, but I want everybody to know what I know. So Isaac, you are our navigator. I'm going to have you roll a D100. Ooh. All right. Let's see. <clears throat> Exciting. It's a good thing now isn't navigating because I believe it's a some a task that would require both patience and discipline. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. You were you were never going to be the navigator. Twenty seven. Twenty seven. Okay. So the morning passes uh, pretty quietly. You don't see any travelers on the road. the The main interstate that leads up to Pine Guard is usually pretty well traveled by uh, people who live out in the fringes and the wildlands or merchants traveling from the Snelling settlements up to Newcastle or beyond. Um, and to that end, a fair amount of it has vehicles that have been sort of pushed to the side, but you come to your first impasse, which is an overturned uh, semi that was hauling semis. And they've never been able to really clear this bit of debris. So there's actually a spur trail that leads off on either side of it. And Corin, you know that at this point you have to turn off and head over some country roads, which are more congested and in right. much worse shape. That's the plan. But you get to lunchtime without any incident. Every once in a while, you see some wildlife in the form of deer. The grass is very tall as you pass what probably once upon a time were farm fields where crops are now growing wildly and on their own. You see deer, wild cows. Uh, at one point, you're pretty sure... Sure? Hmm. Pretty sure you saw a flash of tawny fur out in those fields. Probably a lion. Ah, uh, when the zoos collapsed. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. So it gets to be lunchtime. Are you going to drive through lunch or are you going to uh, stop? Are we there yet? I'll shoot you. <laughs> right in the head. <laughs> right in the head and offer you to whatever we encounter. Uh, unless anybody <laughs> wants me to stop, I feel like we can eat eat and go. We've got portable food that we can eat while driving. Yeah, I think we're good. We can we can eat and drive. Just keeping an eye out. Making Quinn sure will steady. hand out snacks and stuff to everybody so that in case anyone's hungry. Isaac, you're not going to dig into the tacos? Sorry, I had dog barking upstairs. Ah. Um, but yeah, I'd probably, I'd absolutely be digging in as well and 
sharing them around. Right. Tacos for everybody. And tacos. Hell yeah. Soft shell? Actually, I don't know. Isaac? Or hard shell. What kind of shells? I feel like uh, soft shells would have been easier for your mom to pack. Exactly. I think so too. I think it would be a, so a bunch, a lot of soft shelled. What kind of monster would give you a hard shell taco? A grieving mother? To eat. <laughs> That's fair. She wasn't thinking clearly. So they're maybe, soft shell maybe now. They're, maybe they yeah. are hard shell. It's walkie maybe tacos now. Shell. Oh, walkie tacos are delicious. <laughs> Street tacos, awesome. All right. These are the tacos from Up Down, where they're in like a little half cut Dorito bag. Yes. All right. So you continue driving. Uh, it should be noted that the top speed of your vehicle is about 25 miles an hour, um, mainly due to the fact that combustion engines just don't really perform as well as they once did. Yeah, I'm also it, being very careful because I know the road is rough, and yeah. this is our only vehicle. Yep, you got one spare tire. Yep. All right. So as you continue into the afternoon, I need somebody to roll a d20. I'll do it. Do All it. right, driver. 11. Um, all right. Around 2 o'clock in the afternoon, as you are driving along the road, there are cat paws in Clarity's window. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those are Toby's. It's the lion. Yes. Oh my god, the lion got nailed. He thinks he's a lion. <laughs> uh, so yeah, around two in the lion afternoon, around. as you are pulling through this, the ruins of a small town in rural Minnesota that really wasn't much more than a main street and a grocery store, uh, you see, walking along the side of the road, completely uh, either oblivious or not caring about your presence, a dog. Kind of dog. Uh, German Shepherd. He's a good boy. He just kind of looks at you as you pass by. <laughs> Doesn't even bark or anything like that? Nope, just seems happily walking along. Who's familiar, that is. It's a cute dog. Yeah. Huh. Right. So as you continue then, uh, you pass out of the town and continue along the roads heading west. It's going to be like an hour later, you pass that same dog. <laughs> <laughs> Tie yeah. dog. And then again. <laughs> nope, you never see the dog again. You didn't stop to pet the dog, so, you know, that was the opportunity that you were being given. <laughs> I was I not going dog? to take it. <laughs> All right. Give me that opportunity when we're walking and hell yeah. <laughs> okay uh so you go for a few more hours and it's starting to get dark i would start looking for a place to pull off uh where we could maybe hide the car a little bit i definitely okay. don't want to drive too long at night if i don't have to especially since it requires headlights and that basically is just like a big thing that says hey we're here in a car yep and you are well outside of the Newcastle area at yeah. this point. So so it's basically as soon as it gets to the point where I can't see anymore without the headlights, uh, I'm like, all right, we're going to pull off and find a place to kind of hide the car and camp. Roll me a D6. Oh, a D6. Well. I won't use that one. Two. Two? Uh, you spot a farmhouse along the roadside that seems mostly intact. No lights are on. No smoke rising from it. It's likely abandoned. What do you guys think? See? Seems are we right. stopped yet? Are Is we stopped? No. Is there a, we're slowing down. Is there like a barn or a shed or anything that I could maybe park the truck there in? There is a the barn and a shed and what looks to be a long livestock building. Okay. 
whatever would be easiest and best to conceal the SUV, I would like to pull into that. Okay. Uh, the shed and barn are both still closed, but the doors to the livestock building are thrown open. One of them is lying half off its hinges, kind of at an odd angle, but you're able to drive right into the tunnel-like building if you want to, uh, or back into it if you prefer. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna back into it, and even though the door, one of the doors is off the hinges, like the other door isn't. The other door is just flung open. Okay, so we could close it because I want to cut off view to the to the vehicle if I can for the yep. most part. But okay, I'll, I'll I'll back in so that we can just out the next morning. Okay. Same reason I back into parking spaces because I'm lazy. At this point, you've all been cooped up in this vehicle for about ten hours. Oh, finally! I'm gonna rush towards the, the uh, farmhouse. <laughs> you will be begin exploring it. Keep quiet and look around <clears throat> and see if anybody's here. <laughs> Quickly throws a thumbs up, but just continues straight towards the building. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do a essentially amounts to a perception test. Um, mental I test tell- difficulty is going to be uh, three, except for Nell, who has a four. So <laughs> I tell Quinn, I go, if she gets captured, I'm going to say we don't know her. Oh, okay. Perception <laughs> test? Yep. Or mental, yeah. Mental. Intel- intellect test. I'll put That's- some effort. I'll put some effort into this. Okay. Thirteen. Thirteen? Seven. Seven. Would, would, uh, I died twelve. Twelve. Yeah. Corin's busy busy checking over the car. <laughs> Corin, you were not expecting to hit so many bugs. <laughs> Quinn just God. really <laughs> got a pee probably at this point. Uh, Clarity, what'd you get? I got seventeen. Okay. So surprisingly. <laughs> Nell is the most perceptive of everybody. Isaac, what did Isaac get? Uh, 13. 13. So he made it. So did Quinn. Corin didn't. Um, but <laughs> Nell is like, you get up to I the house. It down. I thought I dropped it down to a two. Oh, you did. So yeah, you did make it. But Nell, <laughs> you're like, <laughs> there's this moment of clarity as you are like, okay, no one's used that for at least 10 years. No one's used that. You get up to the door, there's a layer of dust on it, the windows are covered in grime, but they're still intact. The door is unlocked. As you step in, there's the faint scent of rotted food, but not the overwhelming stench of decay and death of bodies. You kind of look around, that looks like some very old people lived here once upon a time. And it doesn't look like anybody's been here for a very long time. The wood floor kind of creaks with every step you make as you work your way through the house and finally find the bathroom. Well, before I proceed into the house, I'm going to do the stupid Nell thing and just yell out the door, everything's fine, and then (laughs) then explore the house. I seriously (laughs) run up there and I go, Nell, I swear to the gods, if you don't stop yelling... I'll leave you here. And if you think I'm joking, I dare you to try me. And I do not smile at her at all. She gives two <laughs> thumbs up and just blinks <laughs> away. <laughs> uh, Isaac and Quinn, still back by the vehicle, you notice that there's a well on the property uh, that appears to be uncovered. Go pee in it. And you also see that this livestock building was likely once upon a time for horses. There's different tack and bridle situated at different intervals, but all the stalls have been flung open. It appears that whoever was here last probably freed all of the animals. All right. Huh? Are we... Uh, is there a way to... Te- Check the water to see if it's any good. Maybe. Or if there is any water in the well. Drink it. Yeah, if there's a bucket and a line you want to toss down. 
Yeah. You toss it down, it splashes into something about 16, 17 feet down. Just out of sight. I reel, I reel the bucket back up to take a look at the water. Looks good. Drink it. Yeah, is there a way, is there a way without drinking it that I can test to see if it's potable? It depends if you have a wallet, water quality analysis kit with you. Damn it. <laughs> uh, and there's not like a spell or anything I can cast. Do, I knew do you know something. a spell that would do that? Uh, let's see if I do know a Can I roll to see if I know a spell? Sure. You know what? Mental test, difficulty five. Okay. Uh, magic training? Mm, magic training is what's going to allow you to do this. We're not going to apply okay, that to it. Okay. Um... Already. Nat one. Ooh. You're pretty sure you know a spell to check that. As you cast it, nothing happens, so you're pretty sure it's good. Oh boy. All right. Uh, I take a little sip. Tastes fine. All right. So, uh, do we have any? Uh, I, I'm guessing we have well, a couple of containers. That we can use to like have to have some water, which are also probably likely full right now. But yeah, okay, okay. So the, I didn't know how full we were. I I look at Isaac after he tastes it, after me saying drink it, and I look at him and I go, "We could have boiled it first to eliminate <laughs> all bad things in it." I have a question, Ryan. Yes, sure, it's fine. Completely unrelated. Um. If I use my create water ability on my, would I be able to use that like on a bathtub or a sink or anything? Yeah. Technically, it's not phrase so, but I'd allow I it. I wasn't doing that. Okay. Totally unrelated to the water question here, but <laughs> do you create warm water or like cold water? I or does it vary? Ground it... ground temperature water. <laughs> I feel like that would be very uncomfortable to get into in a bath. Usually, groundwater is very cold. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can always boil it. Okay. <clears throat> so, what does setting up camp look like for the In-N-Out salvage crew? I assume nobody wants to sleep in the car, because we're probably going to have to do that once or twice in the future. Yeah, are we... Or more. You uh... said there was a house. Are we going to try to sleep in the house? Are we going to sleep how close, the is car? The, how close is the no, house it's... to the shit? Or to the horse, to the to the livestock shed? Uh, the house and the livestock barn are roughly 100 feet apart. I think for the night, I'm going to have, I got to sleep in the car. So watch the car? Yeah. We can't afford somebody stealing our stuff for stealing this car. Well, do we want to just make a camp? Next to the car? If you don't mind, we can use some of the facilities in the house, but I feel like for sleeping and for keeping watch, we should be close to the car. If anybody wants to take a bath or use the bathroom, obviously the house, but. Yeah, you can make a fire. Cool, cool. Uh, let's make it like in the shed if we can like in a place that looks like it won't just catch the entire shed on fire yeah so the mm -hmm. floor foundation of the shed is um compacted dirt and cement so perfect great you've got large stalls that they would have housed the horses in and you're able to kind of shut half of the barn so that nobody can see in from a certain direction and you sort of set up in that corner with your fire. You're pretty sure that it'll be pretty hidden. Okay. Happy with that. Do I find anything interesting while I'm exploring mm. the house? That'll be a mental test. We're going to call it a difficulty three. All right. I don't think that I have anything particularly useful for that. So... Mental test difficulty three. Mm 
We're just gonna roll. Thirteen. Okay. Uh, you find some costume jewelry. All right. I put it on immediately. Cursed. <laughs> it's cursed. Yeah. Uh, you find quite a bit of costume <laughs> Very jewelry, fast. actually. I, Very I am decked out in bling now. <laughs> Um, and aside from that, you find a lot of family pictures. Uh, there's a very old television that probably didn't work before the fall. Uh, some knives and stuff in the kitchen, a lot of rotted, moldy food, but yeah, not much else. Any knickknack collections? Yes, uh, whoever lived here really liked turtles. So they have a, an entire wall of shelves that are different ceramic and curio versions of turtles. Get, get each of us a turtle that reminds us of you. Or that uh, that reminds you. you. No, no, go the same. Yeah. Go the first one. <laughs> us of you. Like, like, which one, ones yeah. are you? Get, it, get each of us a turtle us. and mm -hmm. which one of them, like, reminds you of, of us, of the one you're giving it to. <laughs> I, I would like to grab a single, uh, like, palm-sized turtle, if I can. Okay. You find a very realistic-looking one. Oh. Sort of dust it off. It's an actual turtle. <laughs> <laughs> Comes alive. <laughs> For a second, you're not sure if it's taxidermied or not, but no, it's just plastic. Oh, cool. And then, I, then I'm going to go return to the... I'm going to tuck that into my pocket and then uh, check in with everyone else. Yeah. Oh, I wanted to check to see if the plumbing was functioning. Um, I... As you flush the toilet, no, it is not. Oh, unfortunate. You got to jiggle the handle. Oh. <laughs> Nothing. There's no water pressure. I don't know how to fix it then. <laughs> the extent of my knowledge. Uh, <laughs> that case, I will return to the group and inform them that the plumbing is shot. How do you know that? The toilet didn't work. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's a some nice bling you got there. Yeah, I Nell is just decked out in costume jewelry. <laughs> Found some some good stuff. Perfect. Proper pirate, pirate now. Yeah. Perfect pirate. <laughs> Do you want one? And take off one of the one of the fake. I assume they're plastic. Or... Uh, they're metal. It's just oh, okay. glass gems and stuff. Mm. Ah, all right. I take off one of the, the the rings with like a red gem and give that to Quinn. Yeah, I'm sure. I'll take one. <laughs> Do you want one, Corin? No, I don't look good in jewelry. But oh you. yeah, I think you would look great. Isaac, that's sweet of you. I think I'm okay. I've never been one for jewelry. Can I say that one of the pieces was a tiara, and I just want to put that on Isaac's head? <laughs> um, <laughs> tell you what, roll me a d20. All right. <laughs> I'm thinking of a number. Mom. I rolled a 13. It's above the number I wanted, so yep, you found a tiara. It was nice. in a... <laughs> small velvet box that you pulled open and were like, yoink. <laughs> <laughs> it is now on Isaac's head. <laughs> Isaac now puts a tire on your head. <laughs> okay. You we look are... great now. Mm -hmm. Doesn't he look great, Quinn? Mm -hmm. We are in and out salvage. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Corin, you do know that costume jewelry can sell for quite a bit with salvage <laughs> companies, so... Mm -hmm. It you might be, be wearing quite a you might be wearing quite a bit of money, Quinn, for uh, Nell. So I'm we'll just make sure to keep it. Blingin. I will say, with that in mind, when we get out around where we're going, like more into the Knights of Snelling, you may want to not be wearing all of that because if they do spot us. Yeah. Okay. 
I also I tell them everything my father told me about the Knights of Snelling and how to handle 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 it. About how we'll probably if they do find us, we'll probably have to play ball a little bit and possibly give them something if they ask for a cut. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully we won't encounter them though. That's what the paths past my grandmother and I picked out is hopefully going to accomplish. We'll Fingers miss them. crossed. You Quinn also will... oh sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say Quinn would probably be working on building a fire during all of this. Oh yeah, you were as able well. to do that easily. Yeah. Wilderness scouts. You know. Uh -huh. You can build okay. a fire anywhere. <laughs> there was even a wood pile behind the house. So yeah, huh. you you had plenty of dry wood to use and there are even some newspapers inside that you were able to make kindling with. All of the newspapers are talking about something called the coronavirus. <laughs> no. Oh, no. You have no idea what that is. Would Isaac, since he has a background in history? Yes. Yeah. Isaac, you remember that day in history class. Oh man, I'm trained in history. That means I remember. So am I. <laughs> Darn it. You all <laughs> technically are, yes. Uh, uh, the so. only thing that Nell remembers from history is the Library of Alexandria. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> that is true, based mm -hmm. on last week's rolls. That, that's canon. <laughs> it replaced everything mm -hmm. in her mind that has to do with history. <laughs> yes. That is what she knows. Spot. Pushed mm -hmm. it out. <laughs> She forgot some of her own memories. <laughs> My name's again, Len. Gained, nope, that's not right. And yet gained <laughs> some, of the, some of the memories of the librarians from the Library of Alexandria. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh goodness. We get we uh, get in we get in there and she's like, I know where this is. <laughs> I know what section it's from. <laughs> All right. I've, I've been here before. Uh, you also do talk about how the Knights of Snelling came to be. In the days immediately after the fall, a group of um, reenactors, essentially um, people who practiced the medieval arts, both of combat and courtly arts, took over Fort Snelling, which was an old fort from the frontier era that overlooked the river. And from there... Uh, managed to weather out, uh, out the starving time as many people fled the city or died in it from not having food and water. And more recently, over the past 10 years, have started to establish small settlements around the city, around the ruins, to mine it and uh, to try to farm in, in and amongst the rubble. They are... They take their reenactments very seriously, and uh, anybody who's had any interactions with them before, they speak with kind of like a pseudo-medieval dialect. Like, forsooth, verily. So more so than the Knights of Pratchett. Uh, yeah, they just speak with a British accent. <laughs> These guys, like, they, this is how they talk. Mm. <laughs> they think it's Arthurian times come again. So basically, they're just medieval times rejects. Essentially, yeah, yeah, they. <laughs> a couple of them may have worked at medieval times. <laughs> All right. So night falls. It gets very dark. You're all used to the night and how dark it gets, but tonight there's almost no moon. The stars overhead spread as far as you can see, and those fields of tall grasses and crops that surround this place suddenly become this eerie, whispering mass of darkened shadow just on the edges of your vision. The firelight within the stable crackles, and you're certain anybody from miles away could see it, but as you any of you step outside the barn it's very well concealed so 
So how does the in and out salvage crew spend their night? Quinn would have made dinner with uh, whatever she managed to scrounge up for dinner supplies. Okay. Assuming probably canned goods if they those were available or not really something that something that would have been that we could have traveled with at least uh while dinner was being made uh corin i almost said dart just flash <laughs> Wrong back game. to a completely yeah just <laughs> completely different <laughs> and he'd love it here uh corin uh with his with his uh, flashlight, the new flashlight that he picked up at home since his last one exploded because of that battery. Um, checks under the hood, makes sure everything, you know, this is the first time taking the car out. It was 10 hours, so he checks to make sure everything's still in order. Nothing's come undone. Yeah, no, everything seems really in good condition, actually. Uh, he, the car held up. He takes a moment to be kind of proud of himself, just a little bit. Uh, before he wipes that away and like closes the hood comes over and sits by everybody else Nell would probably pull out her uh, mermaid playing cards and organize a game of poker using the uh, costume jewelry as betting chips <laughs> <laughs> you're the only one with anything to bet she d disseminates it divvies up she the loot All right, yeah yeah all right, I'll play. Like a proper captain. Friend of the game. Friend of the yeah. game. You said that last time, and you started yelling at me. <laughs> <laughs> it's only friendly when she's winning. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so you spend the early hours of nightfall, the hours just after dusk, having full bellies and some fun playing cards around the campfire. But you start to get a little tired. It's been a very full day. This is the furthest any of you have ever traveled from home. Since the fall. I'll take first watch. Who wants second? I'll probably take second. Um, I'll, take, I'll take third watch. Okay. I guess that leaves me as last. Yep. Okay. And how long are these watches going to be? How long can we... Because this isn't D&D, &D, but can it, is it the same? Like, if we watch for two hours, we still get enough rest? Yep. Okay, then sure. All right. So as everybody grabs their sleeping bags or whatever they're going to be sleeping in... I brought a in, quilt. A quilt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Put the hoodie on just to keep warm. It's useful. It's kind of a chilly night. You settle in, find the softest patch of compacted dirt that you can, cover yourselves up, nestle up, and try to get some sleep. Corin, yep. you stay up. Rifle at the ready. Keep an eye. You stay by the fire, or do you go outside? Walk around a little bit. Okay. Not too far but I do walk around outside a little bit. Okay. The crickets and frogs are starting to come to life as you exit out into the night. I keep my hood up. <laughs> it's very dark. You can just see the vague silhouettes and shadows of the house, the well, the barn. The starlight seems blinding bright far above you. The wind rustles through the grasses. Roll me a d100. Oh, that's not what I had ready. That is a 13. Okay. And let's go ahead and make a uh, intellect test. We're going to call it difficulty four for Intellect trying test. to perceive any threats. Difficulty four. I don't think I have anything. That. Nope. Okay. So 
So just uh, 12 or better then. Going to be a 13. 17. Good enough. You keep a close eye out, but you don't see anything. You don't even see any wildlife. No raccoons or wolves of any kind. It's just a quiet, peaceful night for your two hours of watch. I'm feeling a little tired. You head back in by the fire. How do you wake up, Isaac? I just kind of uh, nudge him in the side with my boot a little bit till he wakes up. Isaac would uh, get up, have his um, pike on probably like however he carries it and uh, probably stand by the door and not go too far out unless he saw or heard something. Okay. So Corin, you climb into the car suspension squeaking slightly as you settle in for the night across the bench of the front seat and get some rest. Isaac, you stand sentinel in front of the car at the edge of the door. The flickering embers of a dying fire at the edge of your vision as you look out into the inky blackness of the Midwestern landscape without any visible sources of light. Roll me a d100. Ten. Okay. Would you also roll me a d20, please? Okay. Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. <laughs> oh, Great. this is, uh... Great. This is fun. It's the uh -oh. same dog. <laughs> be hilarious but no <laughs> Isaac you where did Isaac grow up before the fall probably outside of some kind of air hub whatever's would that be like where in Minnesota would there be like a like a like a hub where his father would have worked out of I mean his father probably worked at the Minneapolis St. Paul airport but or something like that yeah yeah so you're very familiar with the sound of airplanes. As you're... Well, yeah, especially since uh, his dad still flies one. Yep. As you're looking out the night sky, hearing the crickets and the chirps of the frogs around you, the rustle of the crops out in the fields, there's another sound, faint at first, but... Then you see something moving across the stars, this black spot with the occasional blinking light. You spot an airplane flying southward. Isaac would probably like lean back against the car so it's like try to make himself more cons more um inconspicuous in case they're trying to look down. It's a little farther out of field from the farm, so it's not flying directly overhead, but it's close. I didn't think you'd see a plane out this direction. Especially since it's like, what, uh, midnight around, or around that time? Yeah, a little after midnight. Plane passes. The night begins to fall silent once more. And it's gone. The rest of your watch passes without any incident. It's a quiet night. Eventually feeling tired and like a couple hours have passed since you check your watch. Uh, you go to wake up Nell. How do you how does Isaac wake up Nell? Probably just hand on the shoulder. 
and then whisper, no. Hmm, I what? Your turn. Return to what? Your turn. <laughs> I, I lift myself from uh, uh, the blanket that I stole from the house because I forgot to uh, pack bedding. It's moth-eaten, um, but yeah, it's functional. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I will, I will give an exaggerated stretch and yawn and then head out of the... Oh, the fire is almost completely out at this point. It's basically just embers. But it's enough light to find your way past Quinn, the car, as Isaac settles back into his bedroll. Probably a very cozy sleeping bag is what I'm picturing for Isaac. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah. And now as you get outside, the brisk night air hits you. You sort of pull that thin quilt closer around you. And the rest a hand on your cutlass as you look out into the night. Roll me D100. Oh, I was I was going to say now would probably go out a little bit further just to make sure she didn't accidentally wake anyone up by being too rambunctious. Go about 25 feet out from the entrance to the barn. 30. 30, okay. Natural 30. <laughs> Technically, yes. Uh, so, yeah, you stand out there, the stars overhead, the sounds of insects and amphibians filling your ears, the wind rushing past you, whipping the edges of your quilt like a cloak. <laughs> you do anything in particular during the watch? Um... She might practice her not work, but mostly she's thinking, uh, fidgeting with the uh, the bracelet and with the necklace. And um, uh, whenever she catches herself doing one or the other, she stops and you know tries to refocus her attention on something else. Okay. It is a difficult couple of hours, says you try to remain focused and vigilant but every once in a while your attention drifts and you suddenly catch yourself kind of practicing with your cutlass against the shadows and still yourself and try to resist the urge to be silly a couple hours pass at least you're pretty sure it's a couple hours honestly you have no idea you go back into the barn to wake up Quinn how does now wake up Quinn um, Quinn, Quinn, get up, Quinn. <laughs> what? Get up, Quinn. Qu what? What? It's time for your watch. This definitely wakes Isaac up too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not me. I go. I go you're over you're shut tightly in the the SUV. <laughs> So, no. But, okay, thank you. <laughs> Quinn, you get up groggy, having just She's been gonna... pulled from... What was your dream? <laughs> Probably Philip. Yeah. Yep. Let's be real. It was a dream where Philip was actually a good kisser. And... <laughs> and then I wasn't totally awkward with my arms just yes. in the air. <laughs> yeah. And Quinn... Like how it should have went. Yes, idealized version of those moments. Yeah. <laughs> you uh, do you stand inside the shed or do you go outside? She'll stay near the fire wrapped in the. There is the no quilt. more fire. It is burned oh, okay. out. All right, she'll she'll stay wrapped in her quilt uh, near everybody else. She's not going to go out. Okay. Into the outside. Beyond the doors to the barn, you can hear the wind pushing against the timbers of the building, creaking ever so slightly. The gentle rock and rattle of tack that's up against those walls shifting slightly as the night air pushes it. Beyond that, the whoosh of the wind passing through the crops, the insects. Every once in a while, you hear a hoot of an owl. 
but it's beyond those doors as you stay safely ensconced within the limits of the stable. Roll me D100, Aaron. Okay. Here we go. That's a 90. Okay. So you kind of just sit there quietly thinking about your dream thinking about Philip thinking about what he was saying if they find the sword of Pratchett they have to go back to England what would that mean for you you really like him but that kiss was super awkward <laughs> things, things can be improved with practice you spend a good couple of hours coming up with a strategy on how to improve them with mm -hmm. practice yeah. upon your return and the sun begins to rise the pre-dawn gloam the early hours of the day puts a quiet to the night insects and the frogs as they all find their beds for the day and your friends begin to slowly awake around you. She'll probably be starting to to find some sort of breakfast for everybody. Depending on what she could have brought. I don't know if they would have had access to, you know, uh, some eggs or something to to bring with. To do some scrambled yeah, eggs probably. or something. Probably eggs, yeah. Or oats. Yeah. Oatmeal. Yeah. That's a stable scramble in some eggs you and get the fire going as people start to stir get your cast iron skillet out and begin to crack mm -hmm. some eggs and make breakfast who's the first to awake probably me Corin. you got the like fullest night's sleep of everybody so yes <laughs> you wake up in the suv it's a little humid remember that you probably should crack a window next time there's room in the back for as I get out and I see everybody and I go you guys know there's room in the back for like two or three people <laughs> if you lay the seats if you lay the seats down it's I mean it's it was fine just saying I'm making eggs awesome I'll be there in just a minute I go check everything with the car for the for getting ready yeah, everything's good. Cool. And this conversation definitely woke up Isaac and Nell as well. Um, Nell grumbles to her feet. But everybody watches go. Uh, it's good. Don't worry, I kept you all safe. I defeated all of the bad guys. We're all still alive, so... I didn't... I didn't uh, notice anything myself. Uh, would Isaac know what type of plane that was that was flying overhead? Hmm. Tough to tell at that distance. But why don't you give me a mental test? We're going to make this a difficulty... Well, let's say four. All right. And then would Isaac's history with his dad in the, in the business help at all? Yeah, I'll give you a step down on that, two or three. Okay. Uh, nope, that's a six. All right. Yeah, you so couldn't. You know. couldn't see it well enough to figure out what kind of plane it was. Yeah. Small, eh. you know that much. Eh. Some plane was flying over around midnight or so. It's like off, off a bit. So they didn't. So wasn't near the farm, but not sure what they were doing flying out that, that late at night. Really. What are planes used for nowadays? Well, planes are used for uh, crop dusting mm -hmm. um, and recon. They're not terribly popular as a means of conveyance from place to place since it's not always guaranteed there's a place for them to land. And uh, dragons don't like planes. <laughs> they really, so, really don't like planes. So knowing that... Uh, Corn will just say, "What time did you say you saw it?" 
Uh, about midnight or so. There's no way that was a crop duster. You know where it went? It was heading southward. That's, that's in the opposite direction we want to go, isn't it? At this point, you're kind of going west. Yeah. We could, we could go get it. Why? Why not? We'd have a plane. No, we wouldn't. They would. They have a plane. Whoever flo flew the plane has the plane. <laughs> also, I don't know if you forgot, we're on a job. And we don't really have the means of storing or maintaining our own plane. Details, details. We'd figure it out. The eggs are ready. <laughs> We have figured it out. <laughs> All right. You have your breakfast. After, I was going to say, after breakfast, I'd like to collect the uh, costume jewelry up in a bag. Um, who won? Who, who won the most? Mm, yeah. Everybody roll a d20. Make it count. 15. This is the one I picked. I think oh, John good. got a 15. 14. Thir 13. Oh, we go. Isaac so far. No, oh, I dropped it. <laughs> it's not a 12 or a 16. You break sequence. 20! Oh, dear. <laughs> well, there's one way to break sequence. So it was actually a really tight game for the most part. Um, Nell, you started ahead, but then, because you kind of gave yourself a bigger pot than everybody else on the sly, but you quickly lost it. Was it actually on the sly, though? Or You were the first one knocked out for the night. Corin, you got knocked out. It was down to Quinn and Isaac. Quinn, you hadn't been doing well the whole night, and you finally got a good hand. And you got Isaac to go all in. Isaac go seemed... Super confident, but you beat him narrowly and took the entire pot. <laughs> including yeah. Isaac's tiara. <laughs> Solid. Nice. Proud of myself. So Quinn has all the Just kiss the jewelry. <laughs> As you pull it off and put it into the bag, yes. <laughs> <laughs> So you get the fire put out, everything put away, and you're ready for another day of travel. Let's and head day, out, gang. Day two, you're hey. going to be kind of continuing west, and then you'll curve south to the trying to make that loop around. Yep, here we go. All right. Everybody be on alert. Let's help each other out. Get everything stowed. Throw open the door to the barn. Turn on the vehicle and begin your drive. And at this point, I think it's a very good time for us to take our break. So uh, we will be back here in about uh, 10 minutes. So stick around and we will see you on the other side. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. Thank you for sticking with us during the break. Uh, I am still Ryan, and the crew of In and Out Salvage remains the same and unchanged as well as they begin their second day on the road. So, did anybody come at me in the comments for the Five Guys In and Out comment? No one has. <laughs> no cowards. <laughs> cowards or everybody knows or they, knows. Maybe they agree, they agree. Yeah. or they the nobody truth. watching is from california <laughs> <laughs> nobody's had and nobody nobody watching is that far all it would have taken west. was one person though that one person <laughs> and they'd have and they'd have been like i'm shutting this channel down <laughs> we couldn't be five guys because there, there's only four of us i'm, I'm right here you're not a party member. You know what? I'm telling <laughs> Philip you said that. Um, <laughs> Philip's not here. <laughs> Philip's busy or is trying he? to find a sword. Philip pops out of a trunk in leave. the trunk. <laughs> Philip's the dog. <laughs> he, he, he snuck into the... He's like, I can't let you go alone. I couldn't let you go alone. Oh, my. No, it seemed rather dangerous. 
<sighs> I mean, Quinn would have loved that. That was probably part of her dream. <laughs> <laughs> As we're driving, Corin, like, without taking his eyes off the road, and he's just like, Quinn, during your watch, did you come up with any plans on how to make Philip not so bad of a kisser? <laughs> you could tell? We all could tell. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, it's not like I'm any better. I'm just saying, maybe, you know, strategize, plan. I mean, are you an expert? No, I don't know. I don't, I've never had a girlfriend. <laughs> but I also don't know how to, I also don't know how to drive like a, you know, a helicopter. But if I see one in a tree, I know they messed up. Okay. Somebody clip that. <laughs> in real life, that is my favorite response to give someone if, when they're like, are you an expert? Because it's true. You don't have to be an expert to know when someone's She was asking up. more like she was hoping you could give her advice. Oh, that's Corin. Corin's like, oh, that's sweet that you think that. I, this is why, this is why we're good friends. But no, <laughs> not even a little bit. All right, I need... What about you, I Nell? Think, I think Nell is going to, um, who also has never kissed anybody, is going to start giving, um, is going to act like she's an expert and start giving um, Quinn advice. Please advise me. <laughs> I'm interested to hear what Go the on. advice would be. Yeah, this is what we're doing now. This is part of the game. <laughs> But I don't know how to give it. <laughs> What's your um, advice? Um. Chat, who has bad kissing advice? <laughs> uh, <laughs> become a part of this stream. <laughs> you gotta get in there really aggressively. Just smash your face together. Uh, yeah, as first, hard as possible. Yeah, first you just reel your head back. And then just <laughs> slam it into there so as hard as you can. Much like combat. Exactly. Mm -hmm. hey, you have to assert your dominance I on think, day I one. Think if, I think instead of saying any direct advice, she's just going to compare it to sword fighting. These are all things we're saying <laughs> in this okay. game. Play a very, very overcomplicated metaphor with um, comparing it to sword fighting. This is canon. Like We've all said this. Thing. Yeah. So... <laughs> So Oof. I want to touch my sword to his sword? <laughs> How? <laughs> Work on fixing the kissing first before you get before you go there. I'm not catching your metaphor here. It's just uh, carry and thrust. It's all about the thrust. Carry and thrust. I just want to kiss. I don't <laughs> <laughs> A family picture. <laughs> no, it's not. It never was. Uh. Okay. Uh, Clarity, I'm going to have you roll the D100 roll for the travel event this morning. Oh, jeez. We got a 29. So one lower than my last one. Okay. So the morning passes without any external incident. You find the roads that you're supposed to. A couple times you actually have to off-road a little bit to get around a stalled out tractor or traffic jam. You pass, try to bypass towns as much as possible. It's difficult sometimes. Every once in a while, very cautiously, you have to wheel through the ruins of a old main street here or there, pass dilapidated grain silos, and eventually it gets to the point where you're starting to get hungry again. It's about lunchtime. I think I'll, for lunch, I'll be like, okay, it's bathroom break time for everybody. Yeah, I think I need to stretch. Are, are we there yet? <laughs> Not even. How close are we? How close are we, actually? About like a half, day and a half away. <laughs> so, half, so we're halfway there? Yeah. That's what I tell now. I go, half. we're halfway there. So what we've done, we have to do that again. <laughs> Poor Nell. You get out. Uh, we've done so well. You're, you'll you should have put the NOS in the car. No. No. <laughs> That's a great idea. No. Just put the button for it in the back seat. 
I'm not even worried because you don't you wouldn't know the first thing about putting something mechanical on this car. <laughs> As you uh, pull off, you find a little uh, what looks like it was once upon a time a little gas station. Now the canopy has collapsed down, creating a little shield from the road that you can hide the car behind. You pull in, nothing immediately rushes out at you. I wonder if we could find some soda here. I'm gonna look for some soda. Okay, everybody just a little bit, just a little bit. gets out, still armed of course, as you mm -hmm. kind of check things out. Anybody who wants to scavenge, that's gonna be a uh, intellect. Definitely. I only want to scavenge like the front. Like I don't want to lose sight of the car. Like I'm not. I don't care that much. But I want to scavenge like. Oh, yeah. See if there's like the coolers or anything or the fridges or anything. Is there anything? Don't worry. I I will be the reckless one. Don't worry. There is uh, going to be an intellect test difficulty uh, four in this case. I got. I don't. I Does foraging help me? If you're looking for like plants and stuff, yes. I mean, she's always looking for food and things. If you want to look for, That's... like, berry bushes around the place, you could lower it a step <laughs> if you want. I got nothing. Yeah, so see food. Food supplies. What is it, a difficulty four? Yep. Oh, hey. I just made it. 16. <laughs> Wait, no. You made, you succeeded it. The four uh... is only 12. Yeah. Yeah, that, that would be... Difficulty times three. Yeah. That's oh, it. Oh, yeah, I got did it. two. Aaron. I got a seven. So. Nell got a seven. Nell didn't find On the dice time. that I just got a 20 on, I just got a one on. What are the odds? Nice. Nailed it. Oh. You know what a one means. What are the odds? Yay. One in 20. Hate it. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a two. That means I do find soda, but it's RC Cola and it's flat. Oh. <laughs> it's no, it's like a, do it's a do diet Dr. Pepper. Oh. Oh it, yeah, it's diet. It's just like a whole thing of diet. I'm just like, oh, diet, Dr. Pepper. Well, <laughs> you open it and it's literally uh, I, a sludge. Oh it no, comes out no, in a glob. it's expired. Uh, surge. <laughs> Not even the reboot surge, surge never that they expires. Did. It just gets more powerful. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> it's and sentient. It's at fermented. A point. <laughs> That's what the DM intrusion is. Oh, is yes. the surge monster. It's Mountain Dew that has literally turned into moonshine. So, as you are going about the place, unfortunately, Corin, all you're finding are empty bottles and broken bottles with sludge in them. Um, you find a couple of bottles of water, but, you know, no soda. Isaac, you're checking... I mean, I keep the bottles of water, then. Oh, sure. Isaac, you're checking, like, the little office area, and you find... Uh... What looks like a bench that could be lifted up that has a bunch of stuff on it. You're able to shift it, and inside, you find a 12 pack of uh, Coca Cola. <laughs> Sorry, of Croca Crora. Of Coca Cola Zero Sugar. This stream is now sponsored by this. <laughs> this stream is now not a subsidiary sponsored. of. Coca we are not sponsored. Not sponsored. <laughs> Hashtag not sponsored. <laughs> Um. Yeah. Sure. Uh, Coke fine Zero. Name brand co uh, uh, cola flavored <laughs> soda. It's a twelve pack of cola. cola. <laughs> yeah. There you go. So you do find that. Uh, what did Nell get? Nell only got a seven, but she was being more reckless about it. No, you find a. <laughs> Whatever that means. means. You find some sunglasses. <laughs> oh yeah put those on immediately. Yeah, you find a rack that's got some sunglasses and souvenir magnets. I'm just, I'm just you. trying different different sunglasses, like in the tiny little mirror. Trying to find the right yours. one. Yeah. yeah. Quinn, you actually kind of go out, out around the outside of the building. Uh, roll me a d20. Okay. This is how many enemies you encounter. <laughs> <laughs> 11. Could be one, could be 20. 11? Yeah. You are very lucky. Um, mm. You are behind the building. You find a bunch of blueberry bushes. You start to quickly pick them, 
early buds, not a lot of ripe ones, but you're able to find a couple handfuls of blueberries and quickly stow them in your bag. And that's when you hear, Woof. Woof. You turn, and wagging his tail looking at you is a German Shepherd. Okay. Um, Tilts his head. Give it a blueberry. Dogs can eat blueberries. Hi. Are you hungry? Friend or foe. He kind of (laughs) sits back and like raises up his paws and tilts his head. (laughs) Oh, he's a good boy. She'll pull out like some dried. I'm sure she probably has like dried meat or something like a jerky that she had brought with. And uh, toss it up in the air for him to catch. He jumps up and grabs it. Okay. It seems uh, very happy. Good, good, good job. Um, she'll start cautiously walking <laughs> back towards the car. <laughs> As you walk, he kind of follows you. You rolled a one and you found blueberries and a dog. Uh, guys, uh, <laughs> best GM intrusion what the ever. Hell? <laughs> there's a there's a dog. What kind of dog? Here? What kind of dog? This one. She points behind her. It's a German Shepherd. Is it the same German Shepherd? It's hard to tell. Intellect check. Gonna... <laughs> can I roll? Can I roll for it? Sure. Difficulty seven. <laughs> oh <laughs> damn. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, that, oh, come on. Please be Stop. a one. <laughs> Stop rolling off the thing. <laughs> it's a three. Uh, you have no idea. It's weird that there's two German Shepherds, though. I hold my hand out. <laughs> Maybe it's a common breed. He just kind of know. cautiously approaches and sniffs your hand and gives it a lick. I pet him. Seems friendly. Give him the typical who's like a boy stuff. Rolls on his back and offers his belly. <laughs> you better pet that belly. Oh, I, yeah, I am. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think I had to say it. So Corin doesn't find soda, but he finds a good boy. Mm-hmm. And in the end, isn't that better? I mean, yeah, the real soda was the dog. Especially since found Isaac the found soda, so. <laughs> win, win. John, could you say the that sin. again, please? Maybe the real soda was the dogs we found along yes. the way. Yes, that's, somebody that's clip, the case. Somebody clip that as well. <laughs> <laughs> Does uh, the dog have anything on it, like a collar or anything like that? Nope. Just free. Can we see if the dog is trained? You can try. How are you going to uh, check? Yeah. Uh, can we try a couple things, like seeing if he'll stay, seeing if he'll come, uh, seeing if he'll speak? He seems pretty well trained. All right, real talk. Are we leaving him here or are we taking him? Like, I don't... Was, was, what's happening? We have the room. Do, do, do we have the room? We you, assume we have the room in the SUV, can, don't we? Yeah. Does, does he have fleas? Does he have fleas? Quinn, you're going to give him a check? Yes. You kind of get down and you're sort of petting him, but you're also checking for scabies and Mm -hmm. parasites and stuff. No, he seems pretty clean. Surprisingly clean for being out in the wilderness like this. Mm. Like, is this... I would like like to... Go ahead. I would like to put uh, a pair of shades on the dog. (laughs) How many of those did you find? A whole bunch of them. Can I... I point at the the rack that I've accidentally knocked over? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go grab a pair because I'm driving. So yeah, mm. and sunglasses for everybody. Um, yep. But the dog <laughs> accepts hand... sunglasses and just kind of. I hand Isaac a pair. It's one cool pooch. We gotta take him with us now. This is this somebody's. He's trained, and he doesn't have any fleas or anything. Does he have a collar? No, mm-hmm. doesn't collar, but he's trained and he doesn't have. And you said he doesn't have any fleas. He's clean. Mm-hmm. There's no way he's not. Do you, someone do you have? Do you have a 
uh, an owner? She says it directly to the dog. He just kind of tilts his head. Can you take us to your leader? Woof. Is that an alien? He starts to bound back around the garage. Okay, well, this seems to be something. Okay, well, let's follow him, but not go too far, because we have somebody stay with you the car. You could stay with the car, or... I give chase. What if yeah. I want to go? What if I want to go with the dog? Okay, well, Isaac, you've Isaac shown very little. <laughs> you've shown very little enthusiasm. Would you like to stay? With, could you stay with the car for a second? Yeah, I can. I can stay with the car. Is that a twelve pack? No. I give yeah. Isaac. A, I give Isaac. A... <laughs> and then I and as I back away, I put the sunglasses. I put a pair of sunglasses on him, and I got him. Oh, okay. Clear the dog. People just mm. keep putting stuff on Isaac. I just, I'm just, I'm just the, I'm just the, 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 what you call, mannequin. People just put stuff on me. All right, I'll follow the dog. Technically, at this point, you're following, following Nell, as she is chased off after the dog for the last minute or so. How far do they get? You see them kind of heading up a hill behind the gas station. I'll follow, but I, that's a, at the top of the hill is as far as I want to go. Okay. Uh, Nell, following the dog, uh, <coughs> is weaving in between trees, heading up that hill. You're kind of keeping up pretty well. And as you crest the top of it, you see down below there's a small settlement. Smoke rising from the oh. chimneys as the dog hurries and bounds down the hill as carefully as a German shepherd does, uh, which is not at all. Uh, (laughs) Do you proceed to follow the dog down to the settlement? I think I will wait for Corin to catch up, actually. What does the settlement Uh, look like once I get up to the top? Well, Corin and Quinn get there about the same time. You see Nell Mm -hmm. sort of standing at the top of this ridge line, looking down from a copse of trees as you take in not a very large settlement. It looks like it was probably uh, 10 years ago, it probably just would have been a ranch, but they've built several small cabins to house people since then. Do you see anybody? There's a number of people walking around. A number of people on horseback, too. Do they look There's medieval? A... They do not. Medieval. They look western, <laughs> actually, like cowboys. Oh. Are those the snowing people? I think so. However, we don't really want to. We have something we have to do, and we don't need any complications. And we really, if we don't know who they are, that's more reason to not interact. That's clearly his home. So, no dog for us. Let's head back. If we're this close to a settlement, we need to go. No, no. Slowly turns back. The only reason she stopped at all was because Corn told her about the snowing people. (laughs) John. Corn wants everybody to know. Would you roll me a d20? 13. Well, this will be interesting. Ooh. Isaac, you're kind of <clears throat> leaning against the car. You start to hear something from the direction that you were headed in. And up a hill, just on the horizon, you see a flash, something reflective, and you hear the engine of a vehicle. Ooh. And as it gets closer, you're not sure what kind of vehicle this is. You haven't seen one like it before. It's very angular, and it appears to be made out of just a chunk of metal. As a DeLorean pulls into the gas station. Don't you do it. Almost hitting the SUV that it didn't know was behind the fallen pitched roof. You see the person in the driver's seat, pop the wing door and stumble out. Oh! I didn't see you there. 
Um, uh, are you friendly? Depends. Are you? I like to think I am. What does this man look like? He is an older gentleman with wild white hair. Nope. Don't do it. <laughs> no. Uh-huh. Oh, God. We're really it's going pe- there. It's two people it could be, but <laughs> one more heavily than the other. <laughs> is this Doc Brown or is this Morty? Or Rick, I guess I should say. It's neither <laughs> of those. No. Uh, it's Isaac from the future. Oh, God. Isaac in the future. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Oh, no. Uh, Listen to me very closely, <laughs> Isaac. It's his variant. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, I- I'm Herbert Terwilliger. Uh, Dr. Herbert Terwilliger. And you no, are... Would I know that name? No. No, you would yeah. not. Okay, just making sure. Uh, uh, call me Isaac. Okay. Isaac. Nice to meet you, Isaac. That's a nice vehicle you got there. Thanks. Uh, not. Don't think I've ever seen anything quite like yours. No, <laughs> this thing. This is a DeLorean. They made these back in the 1980s. And, uh... It does not get good gas mileage. The body's made of stainless steel, though, which also doesn't deflect bullets. No, no, I d- didn't think it particularly did. But arrows doesn't protect against that either. Now your vehicle, <laughs> that looks like it could probably take a punch or two. Ye- unfortunately, it's not my personal vehicle. Oh, you're here with friends. Kind of looks around. When do we get back? Not yet. (laughs) (laughs) Um. Yeah, and uh, I would not be and I'm not in the position to make any deals regarding this vehicle, but I can safely say that my, who, the owner would not be willing to give it up so quick, so easily. Mm-hmm. And I'm guessing, based on your gear and your countenance, that you've already exhausted this particular place. There are no supplies to be had. Am I correct? I mean, you could always give it a give it a give it a look over. We didn't we didn't get everything. We didn't get everything. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Still some sunglasses. I think I'll pass. It was good to meet you, Mr. Isaac. But I'll be going now. He climbs back into the DeLorean, keeping a very close watch on you and at the store. And just as Corin, Quinn, and Nell are rounding the corner of the gas station, he spots you. He peels out, sending gravel kind of showering up towards the SUV. He backs out onto the road quickly and takes off at a full 25 miles an hour back the way you came. Gotta get it up to 88 at least. (laughs) Not in this universe. (laughs) Uh... Yeah, I run back to the SUV. A cloud of dust has settled over the front end of it. Isaac, you are... (laughs) What was that? I honestly ha- haven't the slightest idea. It was some, some, some old guy with crazy white hair. Had he definitely had an interest in the SUV, and I straight up told him that's not going to happen. And then by the time you guys start coming back, he peels out of here. Did he go the way that we are going? No, he went the opposite direction. Well, we should get going. The dog is from a settlement at the bottom of the hill. So, yep. I Isaac immediately goes for the passenger door. Let's go. Let's go people. Let's go. Everybody loads into the car. Yeah. Everybody bathroom break. Great. Let's go. Yep. <laughs>
and you head back onto the road. So let's have, uh, let's do, actually Clarity, since you rolled the D100 for the morning, I want you to roll the D20 for the afternoon. All right. Let's see what we got. Yes, indeed. A six. I assume we're snacking on Ooh. some portable food at this point. Well, probably. Snacks. You have some snacks. Do you crack open the soda? I ask for one. And I happily hand it over. We got cup holders. Yeah, you actually probably installed extra ones. Probably. <laughs> can, can we get some of those back here? There should... I look and I go... There should be like two cup holders in the back. Are they two or three. good? Are the cup holders good? No, the the soda. soda. It's a cola, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, does is it? It's delicious. Okay. Yeah, still, have you never chilled. had? It's, have you never had? Well, I just yeah. meant is it still good? Like, it's a little, it... it's a little flat, but still pretty bubbly. Okay. So you all crack into your sodas and soon are bouncing in your seats a little bit from the caffeine rush. Need to be alert. Need to be alert. Won't be a problem now. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs sleep when you're dead? I mean, we have. I mean, we've had <laughs> coffee before. So. Yep. Very rarely, but, though. Very but rarely. Not <laughs> also infused with sugar. Just caffeine. So this, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, you are traveling along for now a few hours. It's mid-afternoon. As you crest a hill, uh, you see smoke coming from the bottom of it. The smoldering wreckage of several vehicles seem to be piled along the side of the road. Smoldering wreckage? Yep. As in recent? Yep. What's it look like as I get closer? As I get closer, it's a few wagons, a lot of ashen goods at this point on the backs of them. And then you see some dead bodies burned. I I immediately like pull off into an area where could like what's the area around look like? Flat road flanked by cornfields. Uh, is the grass or anything high? Like the cornfields high? Not really. So nowhere to hide the car. Not really, no. All right, I'm just going to look back and I go. Because Isaac, I assume, sees this as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I look back and I go, hey, Nell, hey, Quinn. We have some recent traffic accidents up ahead with some what appear to be dead bodies. So get ready. Hey. There's nowhere to hide the car. So I slow down, and we're essentially going to, like, kind of creep up on it. Okay. And be, like, super ready. Like, I kind of have my rifle at the ready to point you out just the window. kind of have it at the, the yeah. window? Okay. Right. Everybody's just carefully taking in the scene. Everybody go ahead and give me... Uh, we're going to make it a difficulty two uh, intellect test here as you are all hopped up on caffeine. Oh, it's an eight. <laughs> That'll do. Thought it was Nine. A three. Thought it was a three. Good. Eleven. Good. Aaron, you don't look happy. I got another one. Oh, oh Aaron. No. Oh, no, GM intrusion. All Here's right. Your... We got XP to use. I have one XP. I'm not going to use it right now. I'm going to save it. Tyler has two. I do. I do. I do. I do. Nope. We're going to let this. We're going to let this tell a story. Okay. <laughs> uh, Aaron, would you roll me a d20? Yeah. Yeah, make her roll more. I got an eight. Okay. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes I miss modifiers. <laughs> right. So, as you are 
slowly rolling through the wreckage of this, what appears to be a trade caravan, keeping your eyes peeled for any potential threats. You don't see anything, but Quinn, you spot a large untouched crate sitting off to the side of the caravan. Almost like maybe it fell off the back of one of the wagons during the skirmish. Okay. Uh, there's, there's, guys. There looks like there's something over there. There's like a, like a crate they did that they left. The, this is, you see the dead bodies, right? Well, uh, how uh, fast? I mean, how yeah. Fast is how many dead bodies? You do a quick head count, heads count, headless count. Uh, it's about a dozen. They're headless? A couple of them. Do we know what headless means? Like, does that ring a bell? Generally, that was, they probably were attacked by people then. Okay. Not like a specific band of people that we know about. No. Okay, so we got some headless corpses. It's a trade caravan. Mm -hmm. Doesn't seem like an ambush or anything. Seems like the ambush already happened. I have two questions. Mm -hmm. One, how big is the box? Uh, it is about nail sized. Oh. Right, so it's a big wooden box. That's a big crate. box. All right. Does it have anything on the outside of it that says anything? Or is it just a wooden crate? Uh, as you kind of like push your face against the glass to get a better look, you can read the smudged form of what you think once upon a time said uh, fragile. Okay. Fragile. Fragi fragile. Is that French? <laughs> Must be uh, Italian. Oh, I'm gonna... Italian. Yeah. I'm going to come to a stop uh, mm -hmm. a little bit past the area, like a few feet beyond it. Okay. And I'm going to say we might need to take a look around and see like which way somebody went if we want to avoid trouble and make sure we're not like driving directly into another one of these. Mm hmm So I want to get yeah. out and I want to get out and take a look around and see if I can tell footprints, tracks, if someone went a direction, or anything like that. Okay. I'm going to hop out and go take a look at that, closer look at that box. Okay. I have my gun at the uh, ready. Yeah, I'm coming with the, to the box. Okay. John, what are you doing? Uh, I'd probably be taking a look, uh, I guess, uh, Keeping an, maybe keeping an eye out for anything, you know, anything is, would I be able to tell which, if, if, if I, what direction any, if there was an attack, anything came from? You would need to get out to find that. Okay. I, yeah. I would probably get out of the vehicle. Okay. You're looking for the same stuff I am. Yep. So Corin and Isaac are going to try to trace the attack. Quinn and Nell are going to go check out the box. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Corin and Isaac, you get out, you head to the side of the road, opposite from the attack, start looking around, and you do find some sort of bedded down areas of tall grass, spent shell casings, broken arrows. It looks like people were lying in ambush, waiting for this caravan to pass. They struck hard, and... As you look back at the caravan, it doesn't look like they actually took any goods. They just wiped them out. You said this was a carriage, not a, not like a car or anything. There was a couple of cars. There was a truck that pulled a trailer, and then there was a horse-drawn cart. But uh, the horse is nowhere to be seen. And they didn't take anything, it doesn't look like? No, it doesn't. And there's that giant box that... Nell and Quinn are by. Nell and Quinn, as you approach the box, you are kind of wowed by the size of it. It actually, now that you're closer, it's taller than either of you. Um, but it's not a perfect square. It's more like a, a smaller on 
both horizontal sides. Uh, vertically, it's taller than you, though. As you kind of look at it, you touch it, or...? Um, not just yet. Is there Can any I writing on it? Just use... that smudged fragile. I want to use scan. Okay. I scan an area equal size of 10, 10 foot cube, including all objects or creatures within the area. The area must be within short range. So it reveals its level measures of how powerful, dangerous uh, might learn what's inside it. Okay. Basically, is what it says. Um, you focus on it for a moment. While she's focusing, now what are you doing? Well, I assume she'd be focusing on it while I'm looking for more writing or labels on it, probably. Just, just that but one stamp on all four sides. Other than that, unless I'm aware she's scanning it, I'd probably pull out my cutlass to open it. Okay. So you are aware that she's scanning it, though. Yeah, Quinn would be like, uh, I'm going to scan it. In that case, I'll, I'll wait a few moments. She'll like, okay. probably put her hands up. Quinn, I will, I will pull my cutlass out. Quinn, you get a difficulty of five off of this thing. So it's a little dangerous. And then okay. you start to get a little bit more information as you scan it. It doesn't have anything inside it except organs. And then an eye forms on the side of the crate, looking directly at you as the wood begins to peel back and away, forming tentacles that lash out at Nell and Quinn, trying to grapple them as the center mass of the box opens into a toothy maw as hey, more man. eyes begin to pop up around you. Okay, so it's initiative time. Oh, boy. <laughs> Ow. Um, it this, it's going to be a difficulty five. Yes. Except a, like, modern wooden crate. Um, it's a difficulty five, but for Nell and Quinn, it's a difficulty six. Well, technically and it would be a difficulty six for me, too, because of yeah, wide eye. Your inability. We're just rolling initiative here, right? What a um, coincidence. I rolled a six. <laughs> I'm going to um, apply my initiative training, and I'm going to use my danger sense as well to decrease it Down by to a total a of two. Oh, dang. Okay, it's down to a four. four. Okay. I rolled a 14. Hey. Look whose luck is turning around. Ah, all right. Natural 20. And Nell? Three. Oh, wow. Okay, so <laughs> Isaac... <laughs> I was standing over it just like this, waiting for it to crack it open, and then it started moving. <laughs> uh, Isaac, from across the road, you're elevated a little bit. You look back towards that crate, realizing that they didn't seem to take anything. There's burned goods in the back of all the wagons and stuff, and then you see the creature come to life and lash out tentacles trying to grab Quinn and Nell. What do you do? Uh, immediately you know, uh, activate the pike and go and go for it while I, you know, like, Corin! You know, I like, call back to get his attention and then just go, just head straight for the crate with pike forward. Okay. So you rush forward, pike at the ready as you charge across the road, weaving around the burned out wreckage and dead bodies. You level the pike and are you going to try to ram it into the creature? Yeah. All right. Uh, go ahead and give me an attack roll. It's difficulty five. Okay. Uh, I. Let's see. Pike training. Difficulty four. Alrighty. And that should be it. So. All right. Damn it. Eight. Eight? So, yeah. unfortunately, the pike kind of goes wide off the target, and uh, the crate actually, like, shifts like a cartoon. You miss. <sighs> All right. 
It's the Mimic's turn as it's going to try to lash tentacles out at Quinn and Nell. It's going to try to grapple you both. So I need each of you to make a speed defense roll. Difficulty is five. Four. Yep, because your speed defense training. <sighs> and if I spent uh, an edge that lowers the difficulty? Spend effort, yes. Effort to yep. lower the difficulty. Mm -hmm. Okay. What does edge um, do then? Edge makes it cheaper. Cheaper. It takes one away you from, so you don't spend, you spend two instead of three. I'm spending an XP to reroll. So if I, s okay. Whatever your edge is, it takes that many points off of uh, how much it would Brian. cost you to spend effort. Ryan, can how I can I choose to spend effort on the reroll? I don't believe so. No. Okay, so I'm stuck with the four. Okay. Just trying to figure. I never, I never ever do this to spend any effort or. Okay, so to spend effort. You deplete your pool by three points. If you have a point of edge, it lowers the cost by one. If you've got two points of edge, it lowers the cost by two. Okay. 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 And But if I have two effort, what does that mean? You can exert effort twice. Yes. So that would only cost one point from my pool? Uh, the second one costs or... two normally. If you have that point of edge, it costs... I think it still costs two for the second level. Yeah. So. Yeah, you can lower okay. the your first. You can lower your first uh, attempt at okay. effort, or your first point of effort. Okay. I'm still very confused. <laughs> you have... I just want to try to lower it. But at do least you... one, if I can. Yep. Do you have two F? Do you have, I have two effort? I have one edge and I have two effort. Don't you have two edge in something? Because you've had no. you had you had to add edge to something to make I it. I put an edge in speed. Oh, okay, and you didn't have one in that. And she had uh -uh. intellect. Okay, if yeah. you want to use two effort, then uh, it'll cost you. If you want to use one effort, it'll cost you two points. If you want to use two effort, it'll cost you three points because your edge. I think it's uh, four actually. Four. Is it four. Four yeah, total. Four. Yeah. It would normally okay. cost lower five, two but... levels. It would normally okay. cost it five, but you have one edge, so it takes it to four. Well, if, and if I, I just want to lower, I just wanted to lower it by one. One, I think. Okay. So I'm not using two both points. my efforts. Yeah, it'll just cost you two. Okay. So you're at a difficulty four, speed defense roll. So I don't think I have anything else that would help with that either. So. I feel by the way, but I'm pretty Thank you. sure. <laughs> What'd you roll? I rolled a six. I rolled a seven, and then I rolled a six. Oh, okay. Uh, I rolled a nine. <laughs> so you both failed. Uh, yeah. So the tentacles wrap around and grasp you, restraining you in place and kind of pulling you towards the creature. Uh, you both take three points of speed damage. Oh. Speed, not might. Yep. And that comes out of the pool. And you said three. Mm -hmm. You can, can attempt to break free okay. on your turn. Corin. Uh, actually, it is Corin, Quinn, and Nell. You choose who goes first. What do I know about mimics? Is there a roll I can make to see how much knowledge I have on them? Give me an intellect roll. Difficulty five. Oh, is, this something I can put, is this something yeah. I can put effort into, or is this just knowledge that I have? You can put effort into it, sure. Sure. Sorry, Aaron, what were you saying? Oh, so I just got to look at what I got here to figure out what I want to do. I'll put one level of effort into it. Okay. Difficulty, Difficulty four. four. Nope, nothing else. <laughs> Hey, that's three. I don't know much about them. You you have never heard of mimics before ever. Which means which means I'ma shoot it. Okay. And it's in its dumb face that's trying to eat my friends. Which one? There's a bunch of them. Um, There's a bunch of mimics or friends? Face. Faces. The whole thing's a face. <laughs> it's got eyes all over. Makes it easier to hit one. Okay. 
Fire, fire it into the bunch. It is now lifting sure. Quinn and Nell up off the ground. Uh, oh, good. Then so I won't hit them. Corin, it is actually going to be a difficulty six with the friends grappled with the creature. All right, here's where I can knock some stuff off. Mm. Trained in firearms. Down to a five. Uh, let's see. Can I use higher mathematics to calculate the trajectory? Uh, you know what? I'm going to give it to you this time. I was like, why else do I have higher mathematics? Like, it never comes into play. <laughs> uh, let's see if there's anything else. I don't think there's anything else. So what is it, down to a four? Yep. Uh, take that. It's not bad. Okay. You are I'm not rolling you again. 12 or better. Stop it. Aha, 18. 18. Okay, that yep. is a bonus of, I think, two damage, actually. I always forget that. Yep. Uh, so that's a total of six damage, then. Okay. This rifle doesn't do anything special. The rifle goes off the r report of the shot echoing against the... Or echoing out across the fields. Uh... It hits the mimic directly in the center of it, popping one of the eyes. The creature flails wildly, kind of tossing Quinn and Nell around like rag dolls as it <laughs> uh, all of its eyes just focus on Corin. Quinn yeah. and Nell, what do you want to do? I assume... Go ahead. I assume that because we're grappled, it's going to be harder for us to attack it. Oh, you can't attack it. Yes, I can. Unless my arms are bound. Yeah, your arms are bound. Ah, okay. Well, in that case, um, the only <laughs> sensible thing to do is to try and to escape it. <laughs> you can still flail about and kick it. Mm. No, it's one on each it. leg, one on each arm, and the midsection. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's a lot of tentacles. It's a lot of tentacles. <laughs> I'm just saying, as a monk one time, I kicked a mimic to death. <laughs> it your tried foot to didn't stick to it it was already eating one of my feet uh, which was bad but that did give me the opportunity mm. to just literally kick it repeatedly in the mm -hmm. face with my other foot and as a monk that usually does quite a bit of damage mm -hmm. I'll do it that yeah. I was terrified it. though because <laughs> yeah, it was eating only... my leg the only thing I've got is to try and escape it so okay. that's what I'm going to do so it's a difficulty four test to escape. Does the me shooting speed? it help them at all? Not really. <sighs> Is that a speed test? Or... Yep, speed test. I am going to apply one oh, uh, level of speed to reduce it to a three. All right. Boom. And I don't think I have any applicable skills, so. Aren't you good with knots? Mimic evasion. You don't have mimic evasion? I mean, you don't have, uh, the, uh, the, I, I Wait, can lost one. Can I apply my in instrument drums? Nope. Quick, you're good at sailing. <laughs> it's another six, but I am going to spend my last XP to re-roll and use the other die. <laughs> okay. I have no XP now. Dangerous place 16. to be. That's much better. You are able to uh, kind of leverage yourself off the creature's uh, bulk of its body, pressing your boot against it. It kind of sinks in a little bit. You find the creature's body to be sort of this sticky, gelatinous mass but you are able to pull a hand free and then quickly use your cutlass to cut the other tentacles. You fall to the ground, losing your boot in the process. Hey! <laughs> My thing? boot! Quinn. Quinn's gonna probably throw up the resonance fields. Ah. It says... The faint lines and color trace uh, my entire body. I'm in a faint light. It lasts for one minute. Whenever a creature within immediate range makes an attack against you, the pattern energizes to block the attack, and I can use intellect defense roll in place of a defense roll I would normally make. 
And if I do so, I get a minor effect. The creature attacking takes one damage. If I get a major effect, the creature will take four damage. Okay. So yeah, you, uh, what color is the resonance field? Magenta. It's this bright pink magenta <laughs> shimmering field of energy begins to circle around Quinn. The tentacles are still holding you Mm -hmm. uh, rather tightly in place as it begins to draw you towards the creature's body but they seem to be sizzling slightly at the places where they intersect the field so um, Brian as I land I want, I want to uh, shout out to Isaac and Corn. Isaac Corn, what is this thing well uh, it is Isaac's turn so Isaac let, let's see if Isaac knows intellect 5 Okay. I mean, aside from the fact that in school they probably told us a mimic. They don't have monstrology as part of the curriculum yet. <laughs> Man, our school is really lacking. It's yeah. terrible. Scavenging is not what they're known for. Uh, I got a 12. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't the slightest idea. I wasn't prepared for this, and then... Uh... I do want to double check one thing. What were you prepared for? Not, not a this. box. Not a box trying to eat you. Mm. Um. All right. Uh. He's just gonna try and st uh, stab it again with the pike. Okay. Difficulty five. All right. Pike training. Down to a four. Let's try this again. Twelve. Just made it. Yep. So, what's the damage on the pike? Four. The mimic is starting to look a little rough as it's sort of slumped <laughs> to one side now, the pike <laughs> angled up into it. Anything else from Isaac? Uh, I think that should be it. Uh, can I, uh, would I be able to apply a resonance field or is that just, mm, that's, that just that's an action, I think. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And you took your action to attack. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then that's all. It. That's all I got. All right. So the mimic's turn. It is going to try to draw Quinn into its body as another toothy maw kind of opens nope. up, trying to chomp down on Quinn. Uh, it is going to attempt to recapture Nell and capture Isaac. So that is going to be speed defense rolls for uh, Nell and Isaac. All right. Difficulty is a five. I am going to use my training and spend a point to reduce it to a three. Okie doke. Okay, um... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll hold the off. The face. Oh, the face. Right now. Okay. Nope, that's a ten. Okay, so... Uh, <laughs> Clarity got a four? Yeah, for you. So Isaac, you you're holding the pike into the creature, and suddenly the tentacles lash out from one of the sides and just wrap around your arms, wrenching you away from the pike, which is now freely bobbing, still embedded in the oh. creature, uh, as you are lifted up off the ground. Now on the other side of the creature, uh, you have freed yourself. You're about ready to strike when all of a sudden they wrap around your feet and flip you upside down and grab your uh, arms too. Quinn. Curse this blasted thing. The creature attempts to bite down on you. This will be a difficulty six speed defense roll. However, since you have the resonance field, it is an intellect roll. Okay. So I could use my edge mm -hmm. to lower it. Yep, you can expend points for effort. You have a, I think, one point or two points of edge in intellect. I have one in intellect. All right, so that for the first level it'll be two. In the second level it'll also be two. If you want to use two. That but. would lower my, lower it to a what? So it starts at a six. The first level okay. of effort brings it down to a five. The next level uh -huh. of effort brings it down to a four. And that means I'd have to roll a what? 12 or better. Okay. 
Yeah, so that I, I guess I could spend four points. Four points from your intellect? Okay. Yeah. Let me just do math quick. If you get okay. a 17 or better, it'll deal damage to the creature. A natural okay. 20 will deal four damage to the creature. Get a natural okay. 20. <laughs> Pretty awesome, actually. <laughs> I would love that. Please don't fail me. An eight, which mm. is right next to the 20. <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, the creature begins to try to close its jaw around you, trying to kind of gobble you down. But the resonance field is slowing it slightly, but the teeth are getting through and piercing in places. Mm. Uh, you take five points of might damage. Gee whiz. <sighs> Cheese whiz. Cheese whiz. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's a mimic's turn. Corin, you're you're back to Corin here. I get to a better angle to where I can more clearly see the mimic. It takes a moment to get clear. A, a clearer shot, but yeah, you can. It'll be a difficulty five to take a shot on it. All right, firearms. Down to a four. Uh, I don't. I won't be using the higher mathematics now because it's straight shot at yep. this point. Uh, however, I will use. Uh, so it's at a four right now. Uh huh. I will use two points of effort. Okay. Uh, so I have one edge in speed, so that's four points. So that lowers it to a two. Yep. Excellent. Stop rolling low. That is a seven. Uh, that's enough. If you got it down to a two. Yeah, that's just enough. That is exactly as is tradition for you, Tyler. One above what you needed. So. That's <laughs> My dice really just <laughs> effing with me. Uh, so that's four damage? Yes, four damage. Okay. So this shot from behind the creature, uh, it sees it coming, and it's starting to turn towards you. You see tentacles beginning to peel off as you look down your sights at this. You squeeze the trigger. The bullet rips through the creature, blowing out the other side. Quinn... There's a sudden eruption of viscous goo right by your face that showers across your resonance field, painting it with this purple goop. But the creature goes stiff for a moment and then drops everybody onto the ground Ugh. and then slumps towards Corin, collapsing as like a deflated, uh, wacky, wavy, arm inflatable tube man. <laughs> on the side of the road. Uh, gross. Was it worth it? Was what worth it? Looking in the box. I didn't touch the box. Now. I ignore coin. It's the I'm going to grab my boot and my cutlass and I'm going to stab it. <laughs> After after Queen gets it's just out of every it. time you stab it, the cutlass gets more and more of that purple goop on it, and it just kind of gets harder to withdraw it. Is everybody okay? <sighs> yeah, I'll probably <sighs> use hedge magic to clean myself off. Anybody injured? I'm I'm good. Ooh. Quinn has a couple of lacerations. I'm, I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty wounded. Well, let's get that taken care of. Yeah, she with the hedge magic, I'll just like clean off the goop. So and the the general, my body in general, make sure like nothing's got anything in my wounds. Well, I think we solved the mystery of why the ambushers left this here. Are there any other boxes? Is it uh, all the other materials are burned. You do, however, notice that one of the wagons 
has these large metallic silver chains that have been broken. And a space in the back of the wagon about the size of that box. Which way was the wagon going, does it look like? It was heading down the opposite direction of the road that you were going. They were transporting whatever this was. They knew what it was. Um, can I pick up a piece of the silver chain? Yeah. And I'd like to just drop it on the dead creature. The goo that it's becoming, because it's rapidly decaying into this sort of purplish black goop, begins to sizzle and hiss as it burns. Ooh. How much chain is left other than that piece that she dropped? Uh, all in all, about ten feet. I'm gonna take it. You wrap up the chain, toss it in the vehicle. Silver chain might help against whatever else is out there. I think we need to go, everybody. This was an ambush spot. Yeah. Then we've looked and there's nothing here. Do you think they were ambushed or do you think that, that, that this thing got out and that that just happened? I point out the places that I saw where people were lying in wait and the shell casings and the arrowheads. Oh, okay. I guess that's probably... They left okay. that here because they probably somehow, maybe they had a magic user with them. Let it go? Maybe, maybe they were just trying to free it for some reason. So they... Maybe there's some sort of weird so they free beheaded. the beast you know, group. And that's why they beheaded some of the people here? Well, they don't care about people. They care about the beasts. It's, you, you know... You behead someone when it... You have a purpose for beheading someone. Corin, you get another gruesome idea in your head as you're talking that maybe the ambushers didn't know what this was and the reason that you don't see any of the ambushers around is because they all got eaten by the creature. Oh no. Around where the box was did we notice any blood or anything like that? No blood. You do see one boot. But no blood. But no blood. Because <laughs> I just saw this thing not swallow well, things whole. It munches down on them. Well, so. it would have swallowed Quinn whole if it hadn't been for the resonance field. They didn't put much, up much of a fight, did they? Mm. Well, this thing could have quite possibly also ate the people who ambushed. That's the other theory. Right. So we yeah. might not have to worry about them. I guess we should probably get going, though. Either way. We should. Have we patched up uh, Quinn yet? I could patch up in the car. It's fine. I got yeah. my kit. Let's get in and hit the road. I can, I can patch myself. Everybody loads up. You pile in. Continue on down the road for the rest of the afternoon into the evening. Quinn, you are able to use some of your first aid and first aid skill to quickly patch yourself up, stop the bleeding. You're not going to die from this, but you are still a little bit injured and probably could use a rest. Not from this. Not from this. <laughs> I'll just take a nap in the car. It's fine. <laughs> Quinn passes out in the back seat. As you continue driving, uh, it's starting to get late. Time to see if you can find a place to, to stop for the night. Yep. What's the landscape look like now? Give me a d6 roll. Two. You find another farm. <laughs> All right. This one Genius. looks like the main building got burned. Okay. But the barn is still upright. Is there a way to get the car or get the SUV in there and kind of sh shield it a little bit? You have to get Maybe. out. There's a large chain on the barn door, but it's rusted, and the second you touch it, it falls apart. Cool. Opening they the barn the doors, they, they didn't let their animals out of this one, unfortunately. Oh, I just open it and just go, ah! Oh, 
Yeah. Oh. So maybe outside. Is that the only building? <laughs> it is the only building. Can I pull the vehicle around behind the barn? Then? You can. Okay. So it's shielded from the road. Mm -hmm. Once again, there's a little wood pile, but there is no well in this place. Oh, no water for Isaac to drink. <laughs> Do I see anything that would say that people have been here recently? Go ahead and give me a difficulty four mental test. That's a one. It is? Yep. Oh, no. <laughs> he looks so happy. <laughs> do you, uh, do you use an XP? Or... <laughs> Why do you keep leaving me, Corin? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. 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 Okay. No. 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 Work. German I, Shepherd shows up again. I need a d20 roll from you, Tyler. Okay. I'll use that same one. It's a six. As you are setting camp, kind of getting stuff out, getting stuff ready, getting a fire going, you hear a low rumble and turn to look at the western horizon where there were no clouds a few moments ago. Now dark, tall, cumulonimbus clouds with flashes of lightning are beginning to take shape and are quickly approaching your position. There's a bad storm coming. We might be sleeping all in the SUV tonight. <laughs> okay. Ryan, I did want to, it's probably not going to find anything, but I did want to check out the, the burnt building. Okay. Go ahead and give me a inside. scavenging test. It's going to be a mental difficulty of six. Six. 18 or better. Mm hmm Can I, since this is a burnt down building, and there are obviously dangerous parts of that. And being that Nell is reckless, can I, using her recklessness, go to the very risky parts of the building to try and reduce this a step in difficulty? Sure. Obviously, Down to increasing, <laughs> increasing the penalty if she fails. I'm glad that made sense to you. Yep, down to difficulty five. You need a 15 or better. Six. Okay. So, <laughs> now, as you are, you head upstairs to the dilapidated second floor, burnt timbers all around you. Everything's just ash and blackened ruins, melted bits of plastic. But you maybe think, oh, second floor, maybe the fire didn't get up there. Oh, no. No, it did. And you realize that as you fall through the floor, <laughs> hitting the first floor, the rotted, weather-exposed timbers give way as you fall another 10 feet into the basement, landing hard and taking four might damage. Any of us yep. hear this? You heard I something, in pain. but there's thunder. <laughs> oh, At the great. same time as the thunder. Now. So as the group is starting to deconstruct the camp and get ready to camp out in the uh, SUV, Nell, you kind of lay flat on your back, wind knocked out of you as a large storm rolls in. You look around the basement and you don't see a way out. Oh. And oh. that's where we'll end it for this week. Oh, yeah. that cliffhanger. Oh. Uh, oh, yeah. I was expecting something much worse when he said you look around the basement, so. <laughs> Maybe there is we'll something worse next in the basement. Week, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, everybody, for watching tonight. I hope you have had fun. This was one of my favorite episodes that we've done. I think uh, I always love travel episodes. It's a good time. Um, we will be having, uh, dungeons. Oh, actually this week we will not be having dungeons fear on Wednesday. 
um, because the Dungeon Sphere cast and crew in this channel are participating in the Twitch shutdown for that night uh, yes. to protest the yes. hate raids that have been happening uh, because, you know, fuck racists, am I right? Um, yeah. No. Yeah. And homophobes. Uh, and homophobes. Yeah. Bigots fuck of bigots. all sorts. And turfs. Mm. And yeah, yep, bigots. bigots. Yep. Fuck them all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we will be not broadcasting Dungeon Sphere this week, so we will be back next Friday with a continuation of After the Fall. We'll find out if Nell will ever be found. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> We're just going to leave her. Do I just forget about her? Like <laughs> The mimic came back and got her. <laughs> I'm doing my job. I'm finding the, the trouble. took her place, and then it be <laughs> this becomes a, thi uh, a a takeoff of the thing. <laughs> God, doppel. It's a doppelganger. <laughs> I think you mean a doppeldiener. Um <laughs> Sure. So we need to do XP because you're all getting really low. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, you all took some risks and did some exploring tonight uh, a couple times over. So I'm going to give everybody two XP for that. Hey. hey. Did anybody accomplish certain goals that they wanted to accomplish? Mm. Mm. Well. <laughs> Not I at the moment. <laughs> I I need to set some I new did. goals. You did? I I yeah, I made a few new goals based off of um Nell's complicated feelings. Okay. Um but she found a souvenir for Chrissy. Oh I see that on your list, yeah. Okay. There you go. You got that's the turtle. Yep. Okay. That's the turtle. Hey, now your goal says give it to Chrissy, not find it. I'm gonna include the giving it as part of the second goal I have there. I just it's a to different say goal. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, we kissed, but it wasn't good. So I guess like Quinn now has a goal of being making better. We'll still yeah, give you great. an XP for that. Yeah, you accomplished your goal <laughs> and created a new one. That's yeah. how new one. <laughs> Isn't that better how it's supposed kissing. to go? Yeah. 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 That's how it's supposed to be. Every time you complete a goal, you get another one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anybody else? I didn't accomplish any goals. So yeah. Like, you pet a dog. I accomplished several goal, last last session, so yeah. it's not surprising. It was a big XP session last session. <laughs> yeah. uh, so that all all that remains is the MVPC award. Who are you nominating <laughs> for the MVPC? Take a second to think about it. While I continue to babble on for the people listening so they don't have to listen to the background music for mm. a moment. And then we're going to start with, uh, let's start with Aaron. Who are you nominating? Uh, I feel like Tyler, because he prevented me from dying to a mimic. Okay, one vote for Tyler. Corin. Yeah. Or Corin, yes, it is for the character, that's right. Not for yeah. Tyler she as said, a person. She said, she said Tyler and it completely threw me off. <laughs> <laughs> Clarity. The person Tyler that we met in the sh did you not remember meeting Tyler in the this episode? No. How deep? Okay. Oh man, how um, deep into this? Am that I? was the dog's name. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <Tyler's> the <laughs> That's a good dog's name. It is not bad. Uh, Clarity, who are you nominating? I think I'll nominate Corn as well. It's good for the same reason. I can't. We didn't do a whole lot of crazy stuff. This session was mostly driving, so. All right. But he did. He did save. He did kill. Did the most damage to the. the no, he and I shared damage. Yeah, I was about to say. But no, Isaac, he did the finishing Isaac, blow while the rest Isaac, of us were all wrapped up. You were yeah. kind of tied up at the moment, uh, exactly. John. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Make that three for Corin. Um, I think. Between, yeah, since this is the driving one, he would, Corin did most of the work technically uh, for this episode, but also in uh, taking down the mimic while the rest of us were all it, it, uh, indisposed by it. <laughs> I think right. that, I think that'll get that, that, that's a good reason. Corin, the, yeah. And Tyler. Uh, Nell, forgetting the maps. 
because I feel like that's actually like, been very helpful. Yeah, I it feel reduced like your uh, chance of having road encounters. Actually, yep. So I'm going to, I guess, uselessly vote for Nell. And Corin wins. Okay. I mean it. I mean it. <laughs> Unless someone wants to change their vote. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, everybody, uh, d players, do you have any announcements you want to make? I think so. I have none. Uh, All right. Not at this time. Cool. Uh, in that case, I, I think we're done for the night. So I want to thank everybody for watching, uh, either live here or later on YouTube. Uh, oh. We appreciate it. And uh, I did think of something. Yes. Oh. Uh, I'll announce it here first. Um, I, t I take part and in a and uh, am the game master for a Pokemon themed tabletop game that we nice. record as a podcast. We started with um, a D and D mod, but that quickly got that eventually got uh, shut down by Wizards of the Coast and have switched over to Pokemon Tabletop United. And so Dungeons and Dragon Types, the Pokemon themed tabletop podcast is returning for season two this uh, coming Wednesday, September 1st. Oh, that's really fun. Yeah. That's a great so, name too. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, and if you want to check out the first season, all the episodes are still there. And then season two will premiere this coming Wednesday. Very cool. I'll have to check that out. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, if there are no other announcements, uh, once again, thank you everybody for joining us on this post-apocalyptic road trip. Uh, we'll find out if Nell gets left behind <laughs> and presumed dead uh, next week, <laughs> Friday at 7 p.m. Central. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.